Good afternoon, wherever you're at. Welcome oh, that, to it's going to be one of those days. Yeah, yeah. What did I do? Wait, what did I do? No, no, no. It's what? good evening, good morning, wherever we are, whatever's yeah. happening. Yeah, it's, well, it's the amalgam. We're awake. It's amalgam day. Yes. It's all times at once. <laughs> it's every time in every dimension across all possibilities. No rules. Yeah, it's chaos, magic, and order uh, all, at, all at the same it's time. It's true, because it's Geek and Sundry, and it's Nerdist. Yeah. Together yeah. at last, like peanut butter and... Boom tubes. Mom and Dad yes. have gone to the theater and they've left you with a babysitter who cannot find the paper with the rules. They're gone. <laughs> no gods, no masters, no bedtime. <laughs> Only ice cream. Yay! I really want to watch that movie. Thank it's you. coming phase four. <laughs> Uh, I would also like to point out I'm wearing uh, Marvel red pants and DC blue ah. shirt. It's my, you look my like, subtle non branded. You look like Amalgam. Yes, and I'm I, wearing. I am Dr. Strange he, he, he feels very denim. Yeah, Dr. Strange. Well, Dr. Strange. Yeah. I'm wearing uh, DCEU black and Monster Energy green. Ah, oh, famous crossover. Famous very heaven. famous. Yes. Very yeah. famous. Uh, if you're lost, uh, we will fill you in uh, about the mid 90s event later. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but until we get to that point, hello, my name is Matt Key. Uh, we are joined by. The wonderful Dan Casey. Welcome to Wednesday Club. Yay! Yay. Uh, Dan Casey, why don't you tell our lovely uh, Wednesdaysies uh, what it is that you do if they're not familiar with you? All right, what up, Wens folks? Uh, I'm Dan Casey. <laughs> oh, I'm it. the senior editor of Nerdist.com, um, and I'm a big old, big old comics nerd. That is my bread and butter. It's what I grew up reading. I we're sort of, I love Star Wars. I love anime. All those other fandoms are great, but I, at the end of the day, I just love on a Wednesday going to the local comic book store and just picking up a stack of comics. Although. I've been shifting over to digital recently because mm -hmm. I am at a premium for space in feels, my apartment. Yep, feels good. Feel ya. Yeah, feel feel ya. Feels liberated. It, it does. It's, it breaks my heart, but also uh, yeah. it's nice to not uh, be like making a paper sarcophagus for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and, I, and you wrote it. Accidentally shifted over to making a bookshelf sarcophagus because that can be a side effect. Yeah, well. it's it's that's like that's uh, I, I gotta reduce the books I have. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember my friend Steve who used to work at a, at, a, at my my local comic shop when I was a teenager in in Westwood, and I went to like finally when we were close enough, I went to visit him in his home, and he opened up his closet, and it was just long box. It was this oh perfect wall of long boxes that was like this like triple size closet, and I stared, and it was amazing. And then after like an hour, I went, wait a minute. Where are your clothes? <laughs> yeah, these are this, my clothes. I've seen this whole apartment. I don't know where your clothes yeah. are. <laughs> and I don't know how to ask this without it sounding really weird. He says one outfit that he washes every night. It could yep. have happened. Yeah. And when it's cold, he has a really thick jacket. Or he was just tattooed head to toe with actual clothes, like he was or, just yeah. body paint. I never just did always wearing body that paint. texture. <laughs> uh, we, we also have, of course. Hi, I'm Amy Dallin. And hi, I'm Talison okay. Jaffe. Thank you for my Mad Libs fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm adjective here. <laughs> Yay! Hey. Uh, Thank you for adjectives well, in chat. Uh, speaking of running out of space and needing uh, that, that unlimited digital space, oh. our show for the entire month of June has been brought to you by Comixology Originals. Yay! This box. This box. Other side. Other side. This go box. There you oh, go. I did it! Yes! I couldn't do it last week, but I did it tonight. On our final it, week, we have to stand finally, the screen. Finally figured out. Nope, nope, still, don't, nope. still haven't figured yeah. it out. Take it, Matt. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, Comixology, if you are a member of Prime, Kindle Unlimited, or Comixology Unlimited, then you can read for free all of the Comixology originals. There's four titles, Savage Game, Elephant Man, uh, which you spoke about last week, Super Freaks, and today's comic, Ask for Mercy. Uh, Ask for Mercy is written by Richard Starkings with art by Woo. Abigail Jill Harding. It's an action-packed and artistically stunning dark fantasy from the Elephant Men creator. Ooh. We heard uh, Babs try to tell us last week is a total sweetheart, which mm. only helps make me love him more. Yeah. Uh, it is a, a Ask for Mercy is a World War II fantasy horror story in the tradition of John Carpenter's The Thing and Sandman, mm. uh, which we've also, we just spoke about a couple weeks ago. Yep. 
Uh, Mercy is snatched from her own place and time to join a team of monster Ooh. hunters. Ooh. Oh, there's with paint. beautiful art. That. that was paint. awesome. Uh, uh, and uh, the monster hunters are monsters themselves. They have to take on uh, a world of hideous creatures, uh, a Nazi evil. Yeah. Aren't we all so, monsters ourselves? It's a it's six issue series. Uh, it's avail uh, issues take will place be place on Twitter. <laughs> 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 too, too dark, too dark. Look at this art. Oh my God, it yeah, oh, really is beautiful. That reminds me of the original Books of Magic a little bit. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you all know Comixology as a wonderful source for, for digital comics from a bunch of the different companies uh, and a place where you can get <laughs> subscriptions to try out things, to borrow books on Comixology Unlimited. Uh, but uh, these originals we've been spotlighting all month are just the beginning. Uh, you must stay tuned because at San Diego, they are announcing titles from... Try to not faint during this list. Tyler Crook, Christian Donaldson, Alti Fermantia, Sam Humphreys, Megan Kearney, Kel McDonald, Hope Nicholson, Mike Norton, M.K. Reed, Mark Sable, Tim Seeley, C. Spike Trotman, Jen Vaughn, and Magdalene Visaggio. Damn. Wow. Like, you had me at Humphreys. It's a killer lineup. Uh, so I cannot wait to find out what all those people are doing with their Comixology originals. Uh, you can find out at San Diego. Uh, and thank you so much to Comixology for yeah. supporting us this month. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You already had Thank you, Comic Solid. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. I know what I'm doing on my flight tomorrow. Oh, yay. Yeah, you're flying out tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're getting married. Yeah, I'm getting married to Comic I'm sorry I had to find out this. Comic Solid, how could you? Uh, so, uh, so yeah. Margaret, not getting married. You can't just say things like that on the internet. No, but I can if you correct me. You just, you're, okay, now I'm committed, I guess. I can never not do that. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to, I just, I just You're so keep good going. at it, though. I'm I sorry. regret to inform you, Comixology and I have called off our engagement. <laughs> uh, you wrote a book, right? I, yes, I have. Uh, and what, it, it is like the 100 comics? Uh, it's you... 100 Things Avengers fans should know and do before they die. And I've also written 100 Things Star Wars fans should know and do before they die. Um, the Avengers one is a little, it's not as up to date. I wrote it right before Age of Ultron came mm -hmm. out. So if you're looking for more MCU goodness in there, uh, you might be like, wait a minute. Th there's a lot more that happens here. We know, we know what happens when Ultron meets the Avengers already. Uh, but still plenty of good comics lore in there, so if you want to check them out, you can find them wherever fine books are sold. Yeah, and you really are uh, very much a font of comic knowledge, so I'm, uh, we're all excited to have you on, so thank you for doing Thank you for yeah. having me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we asked you what you wanted to talk about, Yeah. <laughs> and you said, remember that uh, amalgam thing from the 90s? Boy, whatever we do, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Let's talk about that. Remember the cartoon all-stars of comics? <laughs> it was, okay, I mean, like, <laughs> I want to talk about, like, like, the the uh, the epitome of like the positive level of juvenile. There is like that is comics at its most perfectly juvenile. Oh yeah. yeah. I but was like, talking about this the other day, and I think probably the Marvel DC crossover series in the '90s may have been literally the first Wonder Woman comic I ever read. Really? Because really? I was a Marvel kid. Oh my goodness. So I was reading it for for all my Marvel kids, and so the Great Battle of Storm and Wonder Woman was one I was in. I was invested. Uh, but I obviously left the book just thinking they were both awesome. Uh, so good job. They, they both are. Yeah. The Amalgam Age of Comics. Well, yeah. What are we talking about? What yeah. is this? Uh, well, uh, so uh, we're. I don't want to necessarily start there. I do have a little bit of history I want to cover before Previously, we get there. Previously on comics. <laughs> Yay. Uh, but uh, the very brief summation for this. Uh, is that uh, around, I think it was 96, I want to say, mm, right? Sounds about right. Uh, uh, DC and Marvel decided to play nice with each other uh, because uh, <laughs> comics were going account. bankrupt. Uh, they were like, we need some giant events between the two of us and maybe some goodwill will help with that. <laughs> oh no, we invested too much in dumb collectible covers. <laughs> Yeah, we have really should talk about the '90s comics bubble. That would be an that would be another great episode, episode. Just like the cover boom in general. Oh my there's, God, the variant so cover boom. There, yeah. I also, I've always associated the speculation boom with the resulting bankruptcy of Marvel. But mm -hmm. somebody on Twitter, and possibly Kurt Busiek, was like, "No, no, no! It was the leveraging by the company who bought them, who overinvested in toys, mm -hmm. that actually caused the financial collapse. The sales were okay, but I'm like, but." We know that the market, like, we got to get into it at some point. Well, and it was also yes, like fact, they bought the distribution. Comics. Like, what was the distribution? Th uh, they were all fighting it out at the same time. Marvel, Marvel bought its own distribution like channel. Heroes then, or something like, like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway. That's a mess. That's, that's, a, whole, going that's, on. that's a whole variant episode of Wednesday. Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> you just put a weird chrome 
filter over the whole episode. Yes! Oh, we're gonna like, everyone will have 3D glasses that they can put Everyone's on. Everyone's in a plastic bag. Do we all bag. talk in our old timey voices? We will all. <gasps> Do we come with bonus cards? Ooh! We show off our, holo our holographic uh, Marvel, Marvel trading cards. Oh, this whole episode is actually lenticular if you move your I was about to say, oh, do we have. Oh, whoa! whoa. Background's really popping Jeez. now. Oh no! Wow! The multiverse is coming apart. Yeah. Wow! Only Amalgam can. That's strange. Get on it. Uh, 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 so uh, when Amalgam happened, uh, DC Marvel they fight each other, uh, and in an attempt to save the two universes, uh, they are amalgamated into one. So Wolverine and Batman combine to become Dark Claw. And there's so much, like, okay, we'll get into wow, all this, yeah. but we'll you get can into it. so much about the fact that there is no reason Batman and Wolverine should combine, except that they were like, who's your first round pick? Yeah. Who's your, like, yeah. who will you, sell who the most, most comic? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's it. That is yeah. the it makes reason zero, for those yeah. two uh -huh. to mash up. And it's a, like, but, and yet, a well, wonderful this, font of creativity will ensue from the bizarre well, things that happen. Well, th this, this is on a certain level, and almost every comic book we're going to be discussing, with a few rare exceptions in here, is, is kind of, there, there's a primordial drive. This is the whole notion of action figures. If you own action figures so that you can take He-Man, and then he can meet your Lego guys, and they can gang up on the guys from the, when the Mobile Armored Strike yep. Command, mm -hmm. and it's, it's just all this big, and it's just, it's just a nine-year-old smashing action figures yeah. together. Yeah, 100%. That is all these books hey. are. That is, that is a nine-year-old painting over his Wolverine because he wants a Batman. Yeah. That is all this that is. This is Secret Wars with two companies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're gonna and we're gonna have to talk about a little bit about the about the Stan Lee redesigns the DC Universe book that came out at the same time what? as this. Do you remember that? I, I it was slightly later, I think. Uh, right? I was a little later. Are you, are you, what, what, it was called like not what if it was imagine. just imagine, just imagine. Yeah, and he did. A, it was like eleven books. Yeah, and, and there was like that, one yeah. of them that was actually like I was very the Green Lantern book was surprisingly interesting. <laughs> nice. Really? Yeah, it got really it went very Doctor Strange. Every show often, I get one. <laughs> nice. Oh, good, good stand. And that's a very good stand. Um, can I immediately derail us just to ask? No, because yes, please. It, we have not had you on the show before. How did you get into comics? So uh, I got into comics through my father. Um, he grew up reading comics. He collected them from the 1950s onward. Oh, so growing so up, awesome. my basement was like this treasure trove of back when they used to cost like five cents a pop. Yeah. Um, which is just insane to think when you walk into a comic book store now. Yeah. But uh, so I grew up having this sort of like library of Alexandria at my fingertips. <laughs> and every Wednesday we'd go to our local comic book store in Wakefield, Massachusetts, Webhead Enterprises. Webhead Enterprises? Hi, Webhead. Wow. Wonderful Washington. name, Webhead. If you're in the uh, greater Boston area, check it out. Wonderful store. Is this still around? Um, I don't know. I haven't been to Wakefield okay. in a number of years now because my folks moved away. So <laughs> no reason to revisit that origin story. Um, <laughs> but Webhead, wonderful store. It really sort of fostered my love of comics um, every Wednesday. Wednesday, I would go with my father. We would pick up new titles. Then we'd get a Reese's peanut butter cup uh, and split it sitting at the kitchen table oh. together. So very like it's like a very like important ritual for me uh, that Wednesday. And when I was in high school, going to Webhead, they had like a whole world of sort of stuff beyond uh, the sort of superhero comics I grew up reading. So I, st I found things like Why the Last Man. I started exploring Vertigo. Uh, I started exploring Image, Dark Horse, just stuff beyond the normal purview. I still love. Uh, superhero comics dearly, but it was just, it, it's something that I felt so uh, blessed to be a part of because a lot of people sort of writ, like, you know, write it off as nerdy, but here later on, turned out to be useful, but more so than that, <laughs> comics are such a uniquely, comics and particularly superhero comics, just a uniquely American art form. It's one of the true, like, American forms of pop culture, and that was always so fascinating to me. It's this projection of ideals that were, you know, people will go on uh, online and they're like, keep your politics out of my comics, and I'm like, ha you are missing the entire point of this medium. <laughs> um, but that's a digression. The important part is, for me, comics represent a connection to family and a connection to a much larger world, because as an only child, I led a rich inner life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I had friends, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, you don't now. His name but... was Peter Parker. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He... he was a high school chemistry student. I was gonna say, it's a, you know, like, I feel like we met at a party. Yeah. I, it's okay, <laughs> yeah, it turned out okay. Yeah. Uh, if, 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 if I can diverge for an, uh, diverge a diverge. Amalgamate. From my Amal yeah. digression, yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of family, my little 10 year old niece texted me today and she she mm. asked she was like hey uncle matt would you would you show my my characters on your show tonight yes. she oh, created she has created 
her own superheroes. That's uh, awesome. She's created one superhero and two villains, which Ooh. tells me a lot about my 10-year-old niece. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I have them in the teleprompter. Do you have those, Chief? Yep. All right, so oh, the, wow. first up is Sky. Uh, now, she, she is oh, wow. She's good. Like, and Amy pointed out, uh, our, my family must have a thing with capes. I'm also, it's, like, it's excellent. That's, that's got like, that's like the good over drapey Kingdom Come Superman cape. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, very impressed by that. Well, like the good four half, half circle It's got billow. good billow. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got some good billow. Uh, so she just, she says that a sky flies, talks to animals to help her and to form an army and she can move things with her mind. So that's, that's sky. I love the part about the animal army. Yes. Yeah, that was the part that my, my lovely wife yeah. responded to. So it says a lot about your family. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, she also then later told me she's drawing a super cool bad guy that lives underwater. And I got to find out later in the day that that was indeed Megadon. Megadon. Ooh. Uh, and, Yay! Uh, and that's Megadon! who Jason Statham is fighting <laughs> in this summer's The Meg. <laughs> It's one of the first things I, I thought. I can't believe she already sold it. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's that's pretty fast. Yeah. Man. That's so good. I love yeah. I love the like shark mech suit on that. That's awesome. No, she she, she addressed that with a, with a little with a little bit of Thanos chin. I'm yeah. Really she addressed that. There's a button on his belt, and when he presses it, the the shark bites down. It's, okay. Oh. So you see the little so diamond there. That's like a tries to button. Touch his face. They're gonna lose their no. hand. No. Yep. Boundaries. Yep. I feel yep. that. Wait, is is he like a normal fish in a shark mech suit? Uh, I think so. I think he's like I think a fish so. man. Oh, Don. It's <laughs> real good. Donald I, I Fishman was your normal <laughs> mariner until one day. <laughs> yes. Uh, so All this right. is Megadon. He lives underwater and is a bad guy. He fights Tidal Wave and Aquaman. Oh, she's now with Aquaman. See, right. it's another crossover mm -hmm. in the making. He has an army of sharks and a shark suit. Uh, a, he's a mutant and he is about eight feet tall. Wow. Nice. Uh, in the suit or out of it? Uh, in the suit, I believe. Both. So he's, in the suit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's made to measure. Uh, and then finally, yeah. finally, we have Raptor. The shark. Uh, he's a bad guy, and he fights Sky. He's supposed to look like a bad, a good guy because he likes tricking people. Oh. Uh, he can fly, has super speed, and great eyesight. Nice. Uh, fly clops. <laughs> fly I like clops. him. I like that design too. Yeah. It's very really eye-catching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I think my, my niece has an eye for design. Yeah, there's a lot going on there that I dig. Well, and I love the awareness of like here is a good guy silhouette, which will make mm -hmm. you not notice like because the guy in the giant shark thing, you're like maybe yeah, he's a bad guy. guy. I mean, feelings mm -hmm. about that guy. Look, yeah. Sky's gonna go on a mission with this guy and think all is hunky dory, but then he's gonna betray her, knock her into the water where she doesn't have as much mobility, and then uh oh, game uh -oh. over. Yeah, game or over. is it? Find out next time. Poor Sky. Sky. Oh Yay! no, I'm not in the air anymore. My only weakness. Yes. Can she oh, talk yeah. to <laughs> Megadon's sharks? Though, and Ooh. I bet she can. I bet she can. Oh, way to give away the third act. I'm reveal. sorry, I'm sorry, I'm right. excited. <laughs> uh, all right, Katie. Thank you for sharing those with us. Thank you so <laughs> much, Katie. Love you. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's get into it. All right. Marvel, DC, we're also going to be talking. I, I brought hey, some Matt, other things. Hey, Matt, what's a big two? <laughs> uh, big two, the big two are DC and Marvel. Uh, DC starts off. Uh, 1935, was that their first year Detective Comics was released? Somewhere in there. 30s, well, 38 was Superman, but they existed before they, that. They were, yeah. Yeah, they, um, they, they the early uh, 30s. Periodical or National Allied, what was their first name? I feel like it was National Periodical. I can't remember exactly. By the latter half of the 30s, DC's <laughs> proto company existed and was publishing things. <laughs> well, they would become significant with Action Comics number one. Uh, Marvel Comics existed in the late 30s as well. They have Captain America come out in, uh, I believe, 41 or 42. 41, uh, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Uh, punching Hitler. <laughs> uh, and Hell then, uh, but the... the they called at that point timely or... They were, they were timely, they were timely at the point, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Their distribution was Atlas. Then Stanley changed it to Marvel in the early Silver 50s? Age. Early 60s. Late yeah. 50s. Uh, so, uh, so fast forward to the 60s. Superheroes have fallen out. Uh, no one, no one cares about him anymore. We get to the six. Uh, well, the '50s, Flash comes back. Silver Age, uh, soft starts, but then Marvel kicks it all off. Marvel Age of Comics, uh, with Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, Hulk, all that stuff. So, uh, at that point, the two companies are locked in a heated competition for the rest of time into perpetuity. Two mighty atlases. <laughs> He's trying to hold Jocking one globe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, got I, got I, got I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> They're both Sisyphean, if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, really. It's Sisyphean Atlas. That's the name of my That's a wonderful frog rock band. 
Uh, 90 minute album. <laughs> Uh, mostly just like a guitar screech for 45 oh. minutes just to see if you can weather it. Just wait until the organ. Oh, jazz organ comes in. <laughs> so the the in-jokes are terrible. Okay. <laughs> just like, there's nine people at home going, laughing really hard. I was yeah. with us on the yeah. mythology, but now I'm not. Prog rock jokes. <laughs> have we really come down to prog rock jokes? Okay. Yeah, 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 we have. All right. Uh, so <laughs> at that point, uh, it's the battle of Marvel or DC being better really starts at that point. And it's never stopped. And sometimes Marvel is winning, and sometimes DC is winning. But throughout all of it, fans were saying, but when is Superman going to fight Spider-Man? And they never answered it until uh, the, the, early six, the early 70s. Uh, uh, what was that? Atlas comment? Yeah, they did. They did. Cheap kills jokes. It's a good hashtag. Everyone can <laughs> jump on it. Uh, so uh, here's where I want to start. The writers who were raised, the writers and artists who were raised on comics start taking over late 60s, early 70s. And, and some sort of the, of the first fan generation of creators. Yeah, so like Roy Thomas, Lynn Ween, Wolfman, those guys are starting to infiltrate the, editor, the editorial rooms and the, the room, the bullpens and such. Uh, and uh, they immediately want to start playing with each other's toys. But the editorial is saying, editor Stan Lee, Carmine Infantino over at DC is saying, no, oh, no, 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 that's a, not. that's a terrible <laughs> idea. Uh, so uh, in the late 60s, early 70s, uh, uh, Marv Wolfman, Denny, a few guys are all hanging out and they decide they want to try and do a crossover and they want to try and sneak it under the editor's noses. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so they come up with Avengers 69 and they create the Squadron uh, sinister, uh, and that is a direct correlation to the Justice, Justice League. League. Uh, Denny O'Neill on Justice League, and I can't remember who created. I want to say Roy Thomas, but I don't know. If, I forgot to write In that Avengers one down. Avengers sixty nine. Avengers sixty nine. That sounds now. right. I know. It sounds about the right timing for Roy Thomas. Um, Denny O'Neill in, Ju in Justice League number seventy five uh, tries to do a crossovery kind of thing, but his editors are watching a little more closely because <laughs> DC was way more buttoned up at the time. Mm. Marvel was like, yeah, we trust our writers. Go do it. Whatever. Woo! Yeah. Uh, and DC was like, wait, what are you doing? We're watching every, like, you didn't dot that period correctly. Like, you better dot that period better. <laughs> uh, so Denny O'Neill tried to sneak some, some in-jokes by um, with having the Justice League fight evil versions of themselves and mm. in, in, in number 75 and, like, Batman picks up a trash can shield and uses it like Captain America and makes like a couple of Captain America jokes. That was as far as that got. But what I really want to start with, and I, and I learned this in this book called You're Slugfest, uh, that uh, I just discovered a couple weeks ago and had, we, we, we were already doing this, and I was like, what is this Slugfest thing? I, I'm looking for a new comic book, uh, book uh, biography to read anyway. I'm going to read this. This sounds interesting. Turns out, it's exactly what this episode needed. Yay! Because I learned some really fun back history on some of this stuff. Uh, mainly... Show us the book. Oh, Slugfest, right here? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It just came out. It's, it's, it's only a couple months old. Inside the epic 50-year battle between Marvel and DC. Uh, and this book is the back and forth, behind the scenes. Carmine Infantino hates Stan Lee. And then Jim Shooter is the Antichrist to DC. And everyone and hates like, Jim Shooter. Everyone hates Jim Shooter. <laughs> like, it is just like... The behind-the-scenes research that this guy did is just like, it is fascinating. But one of my favorite things that I discovered, so Roy Thomas, uh, uh, like Stan Lee's like secret weapon, essentially, in the, in the 70s, uh, super fan turned writer, like he started a zine, I think he might even still be running it. Alter Ego? Alter Ego, There's I think, yeah. There's a new one yeah. out today, and it focuses on Flo Steinberg, and I'm excited Ooh, to have a Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. That's, that's cool. Excited. Oh, and so, I have it confused with back issue. They both came out today, but Roy Thomas... I think, I think you were right on the first one with Alter Ego. With Alter Ego. Uh, Roy Thomas meets this dude mm -hmm. named Tom Fagan at a comic book convention in New York. He sounds like a Dickens character. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Tom Fagan. <laughs> uh, and uh, Tom oh, Fagan Thomas. tells Roy Thomas about this parade that happens in Rutland, Vermont, where he's from. Tom Fagan, I don't know why has a 27-bedroom mansion in Rutland, Vermont. And he says, hey. That seems like an important part of the story. Yeah. What's that about? 
It's be just it's let me for, build, going there. let me build to it. <laughs> okay. This like I I read the, I had to listen to this part in the audiobook for an hour. I was just like, tell me this story back, again. Back, this back. is fascinating. Okay. So they meet at this comic book convention. He tells them about Rutland, Virginia, where he's got or uh, Vermont, where he's got this giant mansion of a, of an like old Victorian house. And uh, he's like, hey, by the way, we have a, a Halloween parade that we do in Rutland every year. And in 1970, I suggested that Batman should be the Grand Marshal for the entire parade, and Rutland said yes. <laughs> so Batman presided over the parade. Oh, my God. And a superhero has presided over the parade ever since. Wow. So he, and at, at that point, it was like 1972 or 73, so it had been a couple years. So Roy Thomas is like... I'm on board for this. <laughs> and he shows up to the 19, uh, oh wait, uh, 1960, sorry, not, not, uh, 1960. So in 1965, Roy Thomas goes to Rutland, Virginia. Did you say in 60 Batman was the Grand Marshal? Because that's six years pre TV. Yeah. This yep. is a fan time. Yeah. yeah. yeah this Thank is, you, Rutland, Vermont. Yeah, sorry, that's why I was <laughs> okay, like, oh, sorry. I need to correct okay. this. This is yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so 1965, Roy Thomas attends the parade. Uh, as Plastic Man. He's writing for Marvel. <laughs> he goes as Plastic Man. Yes! Uh, and falls in love with it. So Roy Thomas is now bringing back all these stories of Rutland, Vermont to the Marvel crew. And because all the DC writers and artists are friends, it's just the editors who are fighting with each other, they're all learning about it. So they're all going to Rutland, Vermont <laughs> together for the Halloween parade. Incredible. And they all go up there knowing that they have a 27-room air bed and breakfast to stay in for free. So all these writers in the late 60s, early 70s, are all going to Rutland, Vermont. To live in Xavier's house. Yeah. To live in Xavier's house. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And they're all just chilling and having fun and getting drunk and doing whatever you oh do God, in the creative, 60s and 70s. It's, it's, but, a, it's a creative retreat. But with oh. the big two. Oh! Because they would all have been living and working in New York at this time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... It's at one of these get-togethers that uh, Denny O'Neill and uh, Neil Adams and a couple other guys decide to stage uh, a, an Avengers story at the parade. And Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams put Batman at the parade in a 1971 issue of Batman. <laughs> <laughs> you can look, like, look up... This is incredible. Rutland, Vermont, Halloween Parade, comics, and you will just... Comics Alliance has had a few stories. Like, there's so many stories about this on the internet that I just never knew about until this book. I'm going to hold my question. Keep going. I have yeah, a question at so, the end of this. But here's where it gets super fun. This is, the, this is considered the first actual intercompany crossover, and it was done under editorial noses, and they never knew about it <laughs> until years later. Steve Englehart, Lynn Ween, Jerry Conway all decide... Hey, remember what Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams did with Batman being at the Rutland, Vermont parade? What if we tried to write a story that took place across the three of our books so that our books stand alone, but in the background, if you're looking and reading carefully enough, you can see an ongoing story. So they inserted themselves and the artists into the story <laughs> On their way to Tom Fagan's Halloween party oh my God. for the parade. <laughs> so Steve Englehart, Lynn Ween, Jerry Conway, uh, Glynis, who was Lynn Ween's wife. And a very famous comic book colorist. Yeah. Uh, she, I think she colored um, the, uh, the, the, the JLA comic. And a couple of the other artists are all in, a, in Lynn Ween's car, I think, on their way to Fagan's Halloween party when the car breaks down. But the car didn't break down because, as you see in Steve Englehart's Amazing Adventures number 16, Beast actually disabled it because he needed a distraction because he was trying to, like, do... I can't remember this exactly what he was... Beast of the X-Men. Yeah, Beast of the X-Men. At the time, he was uh, in a title called Amazing Adventures, and he mm -hmm. had just, rec like, come into his beastial form. So he's still donning disguises and trying to hide and everything. No one else knows that he's this beast form yet. So uh, the Juggernaut was uh, uh, ex exiled to the uh, Sidorax dimension by Doctor Strange a few issues earlier. Sure. Uh, and he is now uh, falling through dimensional portals all throughout Rutland, Vermont, and wreaking <laughs> havoc on the parade. And now the parade has been shut down until they can fix some of the floats that Juggernaut broke. But in the meantime, Beast has to go find that. So the writers and the artists are still trying to navigate their way through Rutland, 
they finally make it to Fagan's house, and that's kind of where it stops. Lynn Ween picks up the story in Justice League of America number 103. <laughs> wow. One month later, this is around January of 73 at this point, uh, and you see them uh, at a diner, I think, and they're, like, worried about Glennis because she's gone missing, but we don't know why she's missing yet. Turns out this story, their story is told out of sequence to hide their story even more. Oh, man. <laughs> because part three, Jerry Conway's Thor number 207, fills in some of those gaps. <laughs> it is, like, it, it, is fi it is five and a half dollars to go buy all of this on Comixology and read it in utter fascination. I'm, I'm going to need those links. They're, they're in our Comixology oh, right. account. They're in, they're, they're, in the they're in our Comixology account. A couple years before Len Wein, who you all will remember, a, he, at this time he is co-creating Swamp Thing, and he is about a couple years from switching companies, creating Wolverine, and then doing giant size X-Men and creating the rest of our favorite <laughs> X-Men, mm -hmm. uh, because everybody was kind of playing both sides at different times. Mm -hmm. Continue. Oh, no, that, that's... Essentially, so what happens yeah. to the rest of the story? Why does Glenn, Glenn just go missing? Are you making us read it for ourselves? No, okay, so, so, here's, so you can read it for yourselves, but here's what happens. So you've got the whole, like, their, their car dies, they're having a hard time getting it fixed, they finally get it fixed, and Beast uses that as a distraction to go do his thing, and he, oh, he needs to hitch, hit, uh, hitch a ride into town, so he finds a way to break their car. Sure. Hitch a ride into town with his girlfriend at the time, who doesn't know that he's a mutant or anything, because he's wearing a, apparently the best costume ever. Because uh, she can't tell that he's blue fur underneath what? all of that. I just yep. love a man with a really high turtleneck. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the Big way. Up. And he's wearing like a, <laughs> he has like a Scooby Doo down. mask. He's just yeah. like, well, it's time for me to be the beast. <laughs> just like takes Maybe he had off. one of those hats like the dude from Fat yeah, Albert yeah, the gang. I think so. <laughs> Much mouth. I yeah, hate, much I mouth. An image, image inducer. My image inducers. Really image good. inducers. Like, they I, fix it all. That was yeah. my least favorite part of the X Men, right? There. So, uh, uh, in JLA. Uh, Every single Halloween in Rutland, Vermont, at midnight, it is announced who will die in the next 24 hours. What? And the just, not for real, in the comic world. But <laughs> And at the parade. And, and at the parade. Just, but and they sacrifice the someone. And I don't, no, they're not, the it's just, good. these are the people who are going to die. And the people that are going to die are just the Justice League. So the Phantom Stranger shows up in the Watchtower, he's like, hey, uh, Guess what? You guys are all going to die tonight because they said so in Rutland, Vermont. And they're like, Superman actually is putting his finger on Rutland, Vermont in the comic book going, then that's where we have to go tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and they all go to Rutland, Vermont to find out how they're going to die and try to stop it. Turns out Felix Faust is there. He entrances, like, he ensorcels the entire crowd. Oh sure. And any of the people who are in costume in the parade, like Glennis, who's dressed as Power Girl, uh, end up with those superpowers. And they're all now fighting the Justice oh. League. And that's where Glennis disappears to. That's but they don't, they don't find that out until later. Oh, man. That's so deep. I mean, like, and did anyone catch on, on to any of this when, when nope. it happened? I mean, some of the fans were like, all right, well, these are the writers and the artists of some of our favorite stuff right now. Like, because there's, it's not like they had, like, 200 titles like they knew now. Sure. They're like, here's 12 from Marvel, here's you know, 15 from DC. Like, that's all they had. So there wasn't a lot to catch up on or keep up with. We gotta look up some old fanzines and see oh, man. if they were writing in about but, this. And, 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 I, and, I've, and I've, I've got a, I, once we're at the, are we at the end of this yet? Because I have a question, and this is a very important question. Uh, it can only be important coming from you, Tell us. Uh, ask. Does, does this parade still happen? I think it does. And should we go? <laughs> if it hey, still happens, Live episode. Should. I mean, live from the Rutland hey, Vermont Halloween right Parade. We're pretty sure no one is going to get doomed to death at midnight, but who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I, I don't actually know, is. but I really want it to still happen. In my, I, I kind of, this is going to be a Google that happens when, when the show yeah. is over. Chat, are you on it yet? I, I kind of think if it doesn't still go, we should do like an Indiegogo to make it happen this year. Or maybe we should just march down the street in Virginia in costume. Yes, we should. We, we should do that. For and like any Wednesdaysies that want to join us there, we'll have our own little Wednesdaysy parade. <laughs> <laughs> when you're back from uh, getting married to Comixology. Yes. Yes. Uh, you can join us. So anyway, I'm done so with that. So the tradition begins. So, yeah, so the tradition begins. Uh, finally, uh, there, there were a couple of other, of other attempts, but, uh, attempts, but by that point, some of the editors were starting to get wise on what their mm. mischievous writers and artists were up to, and they started kind of cracking down on a little bit, like <laughs> Squadron Supreme when that came out. 
Um, Squadron Supreme, which is basically a villainous version of the Justice League. Squadron Sinister, Sinister. is. Squadron right. Supreme, Supreme is the other showed one. up. And it was essentially the Squadron Sinister, but from another dimension. So, like, <laughs> let's just muddy the waters even more. Yeah, yeah, it's a big thing. But Hyperion's like, I'm Hyperion. I'm basically Superman, yeah. but I have a giant wrestling belt. It always, I remember growing up, it always felt like when I found a Squadron Supreme comic, I was like, well, this is like the Diet Cola version of Justice Society, yeah, but yeah. sure. Yeah. But why not? I'll read people it. People have done some interesting stuff for those characters eventually. I oh, yeah. Really, I, I, I like the eventual inclusion of, 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 of him in, in the Avengers. And yeah, well, like, I mean, Hickman, Hickman had, yeah. had a good time with him in the Secret Wars stuff. I dug that. Yeah, you know, the 2015 event. So, uh, so 1976 sees the very first company official crossover of Superman versus Spider-Man. Treasury-sized, right? Yeah. Treasury-sized. Giant, huge comic. I think it was like 80 pages or something like that. It was, it's a long It's book. a long, it is a long yarn, that one. Especially for that time, where they would say yeah. no full length if something was like a full comic. Yeah, uh, and it started off with a letter from Stan Lee and a letter from Carmine Infantino on the same page mm -hmm. and essentially the exact same length because neither one could say more or less than the other. <laughs> it had to be exact. <laughs> And even better than that, the story was exact. I went through and counted some of the page counts for the, it starts off uh, with 15 pages on Superman. And then it cuts to a, super, so here's the, hey. here's this. A soliloquy from Stan and a comment from Carmine. You Gotta know. have that alliteration because yep. the 70s. You know, I think Stan's is more closely spaced. Yeah. I think Stan talked more. Well, he, also, he was a writer, and Carmine was more of an artist. Maybe no, but that was Carmine's the... getting in the alliteration game. The planning and perspiring are now behind us. The pleasure is before you. Oh, that's you. a triple. Well done. Excelsior! Uh, so, uh, it starts off... I, I, I can't remember where exactly it starts, but, like, two pages... It starts off with, like, a little two-page preamble of some sort. But then when he gets into the Superman story, it's 15 pages. Mm -hmm. And it's it's... Five pages of him fighting a giant robot that turns out to be run by Lex Luthor. Mm. He beats the robot, goes to the Daily Planet for five pages, but then, uh, and is like just made fun of and just beat up by Perry. Uh, and then he's like, wait a minute. What Perry said just reminded me of this thing that I forgot to check out on that robot. And I've got to go. It's not even Perry, though. It's someone named Mr. Edge. Yeah, you're, oh, my God, you're right. He basically it was a could TV. have been like, hey, I'm Jonathan Snowboard, president of the newspaper. That's right. I forgot because he was doing TV at the time. Yeah. They had to be hipper and cooler. It's all the rage. Oh, yeah, my God. I was, like, I, was, I was expecting Perry, and I'm like, who are you? Yeah, you're right. I had to, Oh, my God. Thank you. That's right. That's exactly what happened. But so they do five pages of fighting, five pages of workspace, then five pages of, wait a minute, I forgot something. And then he goes to the bottom of the ocean where the robot still is and discovers Lex Luthor still down there. And then they uh, doing something, but he's like, oh, you found me, Superman. <laughs> That's part of my plan. <laughs> Takes off, villain escapes. And then they do a one page biography on Superman because mm -hmm. this is 1976. Superhero identification. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, like like what we get with the cards or the encyclopedias sure. or whatever, they do a one-page identification for all the Marvel zombies who may not be familiar with this character that's been around since 1938, which at that time was actually feasible. Feasible. It was two years before the movie. Uh, yeah. They didn't even have DARPA net yet. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you are you okay? Wow. I'm great. <laughs> I'm happy to be. Okay. Okay. So okay, so they do that. <laughs> Next is Spider-Man, and you get five pages of Spider-Man fighting Dr. Octopus. He be defeats Dr. Octopus. You get five pages of him fighting with uh, Jameson. He messes up around, like, three pages in, and J Jameson yells at him, just like Mr. Edge yelled at S Superman or Clark Kent three pages into their thing, and then he's like, wait a minute, Jameson said something, and that reminds me I forgot to check out something else. And he goes and finds out about what else Dr. Octopus is up to, who for five more pages. Disguised a flying octopus ship as a right. blimp. As a zeppelin. He's like, oh, wait a minute. This It'll blimp's happen. paper is, th is, this blimp there cover is thin as paper. Parker, mister, I want a word with you. Oh, it's beautiful. Who did this? God, it Ramita? is gorgeous. I think it is. I think it's Remy to see No, it's got, yeah, look at that, look at that Parker Mary Jane. It's got to yeah. be. Yeah, so. I, I want that, I want Peter's, like, 
Atari. I know his, right his yeah. turtleneck is awesome. Yeah. Atari turtleneck is pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, zoom in on that, Chief. Computer, oh. enhance. <laughs> enhance. 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 We're very spoiled. Man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Such toys. God. Um, so, but like they, they nailed down page count um, and story spacing before they ever even hit oh, what I, the actual story was. You can tell there's a contract here. And it's oh, yeah. The letter. <laughs> yeah. Um, and in fact, if you, uh, the book is, is available. Well, actually, I had a hard time finding the book. I had to go to a website called Read Comics Online. Uh, it's kind of, it, it's a wonky site, but it works. It, so it, it's made of, of, of yeah. It, it's yeah. Not, it's a last yeah, resort. Don't, if you can don't. find an absolute if, last resort, because none of this if is. If everything is public. out of print, use that as your last resort. Otherwise, please support your comic book I, store. Yeah, my, 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 my iPad started acting funny when I went there. Yeah, yeah like, same. No, no, I, yeah. I I felt sketchy uh, reading everything for a lot this of episode. Gross pop ups. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's a great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, don't don't bother. Um, but uh, yeah, I actually looked like Comicsology all over the place. Couldn't. A find lot of these are not available. We are going to point to some that are. Available in Comicsology. Yeah. Did find yeah, we're going to get to it. Yeah. Good stuff there. You can uh, find this at, at, at yes. shops on eBay, at conventions. Or you go to a store and you buy it. Yeah. Uh, called around, no one had it. Found them on eBay, but it would have taken two weeks, and they were $100. And it was yeah. just like. Move on. Move on. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, so that uh, Spider Man and Superman. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, Spider-Man and Superman have uh, a disagreement at first. They fight each other. Then they come to realize, like, oh, we messed up. Uh, it's actually Dr. Octopus and Lex Luthor putting us up to something. They go, uh, they've teamed up. They go and fight them. They, the story. they go on the truly the wildest goose chase I've ever seen. They're like, oh, well, they're not in uh, New York Tropolis anymore. So, <laughs> oh, I know where they are, Mount Kilimanjaro. So they go to Africa. Yep. And Superman yep. impresses a local tribe by spinning them around with his powers. Yep. And he then he juggles the local tribe. Yeah. And then they go into a cave and they find that they're not there. They wind up going. <laughs> they go somewhere else and find a. Do they go underwater? Like, I think they go underwater. And well, Spider Superman Spider went underwater yeah, at one point. They find like a hologram in there. They wind up going to space. That's right. Yeah, because the World <laughs> News Conference. The reason. So Peter and <laughs> Peter and Clark meet each other at the <laughs> World News Conference because they're about to unveil a communications satellite there, and that's like the hottest scoop of the century. Oh my god! It's a huge story for them. But truly, my favorite moment in this entire comic is when, so we get the requisite Superman versus Spider-Man fight, and the way that Spider-Man's able to put up a fight against the Man of Steel is Lex Luthor shoots him, shoots Spider-Man with a gun that irradiates him with red sun energy that neutralizes some of Superman's powers, and they start to wear off on Spider-Man. Uh -huh. And Spider-Man punches him, he's like, ow, did you just get hard all of a sudden? You got way harder. <laughs> and then uh -huh. they cut to a scene where Spider-Man's like pummeling him a bunch. Then he goes, oh boy, oh boy, I broke my hands. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh Yay! God. Yeah. Really oh. comics. Some of the best out of context panels, but just, oh boy, I broke my hands so oh is boy. an all timer yeah. for Spidey dialogue. Yeah, I, I think that might be in the images that I sent in. Uh, oh. Well, that's that's where S Spider Man has yeah. the red sun energy. You can see it radiating off his weenus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a word here meaning arm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, Elbow. So uh, my favorite part is when Lex Luthor helps break Doctor Octopus out of j yeah. You have gotten harder. My hand. And I'll put up with that. Is crap. this a trick or what? <laughs> I just want to. I just want to point out that, that after you talked about the jail, immediately chat said they don't put up with that crap in Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> they do not. They do not. They, they barely not. put up with it at Mount Kilimanjaro. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm so sorry. The sound is that. Kind of that nailed was it. I had to. Yow. Yeah. That was amazing. Yow. Um, oh man. But my favorite part is when uh, Lex breaks Dr. Octopus out of prison, but Dr. Octopus is the one who climbs yep. away. Yep. Oh. And he gives him a <laughs> piggyback ride. <laughs> oh my god. Now someone pointed out, I can't remember who it They're was on so, Twitter. So someone pointed out that Lex Luthor's are. legs look kind of like Dr. Octopus's <laughs> legs. It looks like Octopus is just a tiny torso carrying his own legs. He looks like Toad, yeah. Yeah. He looks like Toad. Yeah. They're both so happy. Oh, uh, they're so they happy. Look, they look like the worst centaur. <laughs> I would watch this centaur. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my god, I came across that was like, well that's a oh. 
Oh, that's yeah. not too good. Oh boy, my hand. Oh boy. I broke my hand. <laughs> oh my god, I'm oh, crying. It's so funny. <laughs> um, so, so that's that comic. Uh, it actually sells really well. They're like, oh, it, okay, people want this. So they follow it up in 81 with another Superman and Spider-Man comic, but it's not versus each other. They actually remember each other. And this all, by the way, same world. They all, they all live in the same world. They just, Spider-Man never talks to Superman because Superman is in Metropolis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah easy. It's, not, it's the same Earth. Long it's different cities. are expensive. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Lame. They follow that up later with Uncanny... Man, I, I'm crying. You can't now. Got, spell uh, Earth 616 without Earth 1. <laughs> ah! Wow. Wow, you're right. right I want that on there. a shirt. Yeah! Um, uh, Uncanny X-Men Titans, if I recall? Yeah, it's Uncanny X-Men versus the New Teen Titans. Boom. The New Teen Titans, that was uh, Marv Wolfman. Uh, so here we are in the next sort of... It, and and it's, it's barely a rivalry because they basically, as far as I can tell, they loved each other's books. And, yeah. and like, but they... Oh, the yeah. two... Uh, Industry dominating books of the early 80s are the Chris Claremont John Byrne X-Men and the Wolfman Perez New Teen Titans. Yeah. Uh, and and an entire generation of readers was either reading one reading one or both mm -hmm. of those books uh, on a regular basis. And they had a lot two, in common. Yeah. Soap operas about youngish people uh, mm -hmm. with with fantastic powers and like sort of realistic problem personalities. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then yeah. I had never read the crossover before this week. I was just. I, I actually still it. have. I didn't have time to uh, to read it because I was so busy just loving me some amalgam. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, what did you, did you read the whole thing? Did you? Have... I, I only got. I got through the first part of it, or at least the one that I was reading was the, the one with the creation the of the issue. Source Wall, which ended up being a big part of uh, DC's New Gods Mythos. Yeah. Comes out of this crossover. Wait. <laughs> yes. What? The source wall. <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? As far as I know, it, uh, it was created in So this one book. thing that happened in the weird crossover stuff that is supposed to be kind of an elseworldy sort of thing is DC canon? Yeah. Oh my god, Everything that's amazing. Counts. Hey, hey, hey me. What's a source wall? Oh man. I got to do one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we like to, we we love to educate our audience of on, course. on all of this stuff. So we have to stop each other and assume, yes, oh, they may, they may not know what this is. Yes, I you know can't use a pronoun without an antecedent, much like you can't say source wall without explaining whatever cosmic yeah. nonsense DC cooked up. <laughs> yes. Okay, so this may or may not be a complete explanation of the source wall, because I am fuzzy on it. But it's the setup funny. for this comic is that Metron of the New Gods, who possesses basically all knowledge and has a cool knowledge chair. Flying chair. Yeah. Uh, he, there's one thing he doesn't know, which is what is on the other side of the source wall. The source- He's found a wall and he's like, I don't know what's on the other side. That's the only thing he doesn't know. Yeah, and it, there's like, it's it's tied into sort of all of the energy of the universe. Uh, the New Gods uh, original plot is the dark side is after the anti-life equation. Mm -hmm. um, and that all derives from the source, which is uh, considered to be an early inspiration potentially for the force. Um, a mysterious power that kind of binds the universe wall. together. The retirement home for the old gods. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, you, you, your body is actually added to the source wall when you're. This is like one of the one of the places that D Darkseid goes when he's like out of powers. They shove him in the source wall and he just. Mm -hmm. All right, they're back the in the wall. <laughs> yes, there you are. So it's kind this of a comes up, more looking thing. And like, this comes up a lot, actually. Source yeah. Wall. It becomes a big part of, of things, but like the wall, as far as and chat, correct me if I'm wrong. I oh believe it God. was created in the X Men Teen Titans crossover. Chad, Chad, is, it, Chad it, is still having fun with the Luther Doc Ock uh, sitcom. <laughs> they're really, oh, yes. really going there. It's Lex uh, and Doctopus. <laughs> oh, my God. Doctopus. Marvel, you could have saved so much ink. Oh, yeah, my God. Doctopus. Doctopus. Uh, okay, so, Source Wall. Yeah. Uh, I am stuck on that. That is so, wow. Uh, so, that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm trying to... I'm there's, 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 there's a weird one that is not Marvel DC also that happens in the 1980s, which is, which is because Marvel starts, starts doing... This, is, this, was, this was one of my little fun throwaway ones, which I found, because I remember the first crossover event I ever read as a, as a kid was in an issue of Transformers, the comic Ooh. book, the original Transformers four-part comic book series. So... A little bit of background, I'll go through this pretty quickly. Transformers were basically a bunch of Japanese toys that were bought up by a toy company. Uh, and they were like, we, and they literally went to Marvel Comics, I'm trying to remember who at Marvel Comics, and said, you have a week, make up a bunch of names and some backgrounds for these 25 characters. Oh my God, I know this. Go. 
And they did, and that's where we get Optimus Prime was and it, Megatron. And did they have Larry Hama do it? Or he, I know he. It was like Hama. It was it was Larry Hama, and he wasn't. He did Transformers and GI Joe. I know most. I know a lot of GI Joe, yeah. but I just assume. So, so <laughs> but like, I think he wasn't even really a writer at the time. They came to him. They're like, "Hey, you could." No, he was. You can do this because they had, no one wanted to do a book about a bunch of toys. It was mm -hmm. a toy crossover. It's like it's like the lowest rung of the mm -hmm. comic book. So he literally. Like jumped out and grabbed it after like four people were like, I am so much better than this, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there's a whole documentary you can watch about this uh, on Netflix right now if you're in the Toys, toys That Made Us. They talk a lot about this. I hear it's great. Um, really good, I haven't really seen good. this episode yet. Um, but, and they don't talk about this, which makes me sad, but this is really cool, is they do this four issue comic book <laughs> Uh, comic book run for Transformers. I think I put the, uh, the Transformers uh, issue three. Now, no, not that one. We're going to talk about that one later. Hell yeah. Uh, oh, we're going to talk about that one. This one is, it should say Transformers Spider-Man, uh, if it's in there. It should be in there. That's coming. There now, we Star are. Requested by Source Wall is the fourth wall, which is a great, like, makes a lot more sense when you realize it came out of a crossover and they're trying to break through to the ah. other side. Yep. Wow. So they wanted to tie the Transformers a little bit into the Marvel Universe. They thought it would be really fun to, to bring a character over. They wanted to bring Spider-Man. And uh, was it, is it, it was Has Mega Hasbro that, that owned the Transformers? I think it's Hasbro, yeah. We're like, absolutely not. No, 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 because the Marvel superheroes were being, a, were a toy line at their direct competitor. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want their Transformers book to be an ad for someone else's toys. Common, common theme in a lot of comics. Uh, yeah. They finally settled on putting Spider-Man in his now defunct black suit because they weren't, they weren't selling a toy of the Venom suit at the time. <laughs> Wow. So this Whoa. technically, canonically, was going to take place before Secret War, even though Secret War had just ended. <laughs> but like this takes place previously because Spider-Man's still in his black suit, and that was all so that they were the like, you've Secret met Wars. the Beyonder, no, now I mean, like, meet but, the like, Beast Borer. He had, just lost it. He had like, apparently just lost <laughs> okay. it, and then they were like, this is gonna back up because there's no toy for this suit. Yeah. For oh this my suit. gosh. Um, and then after everything kind of came, came and went, uh, uh, they, uh, they realized that they couldn't really do this and struck it from the canon. They actually said, this episode is not canon. It didn't happen in, the, in Transformers or Marvel. Spider-Man never met Megatron or any of that. And if you go, like, I went on to Comixology, and it's Transformers issue one, issue two, issue four, <laughs> issue five. But if you get the graphic novel, volume, full volume, they're all there. They're all so there. Like, it's, it's hidden quietly in the graphic novel. One oh, of the problems wow. with crossovers is that once you you can do the deal for the initial publication, but as we've discussed many times on the show, mm. most of the history of comics uh, was not designed with reprints and availability in mind. Most of it was, here's what we're doing today. Uh, yeah. And you get weird deals like Watchmen mm -hmm. staying in print and, and that being a weird surprise that changed the industry. Uh, and you get things like this where nobody was planning ahead for like, what if we want to read it 30 years from now and don't want to track down one? Like, no one will be alive then. The yeah. Old War will have ended all our lives yeah. by then. Uh, the direct market barely it. exists oh. at this point, oh, yeah. too. And, yeah. and by the way, if you have talk topics for our five-minute topic at the uh, end of the show, please submit them in the, in the chat. Did we well, tell you about the five-minute? I, 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 no. no. I, think you did. Oh, no. I hate spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> they will pick a question and we will have to answer it and it will uh, be sometimes be fun and silly and sometimes okay. traumatize us. Mm, all right. A little bit. Yeah. We'll dial but we'll have five that. minutes for all of us to give our answer. Well, so, I never regret this, but bring it on, chat. So hey! I was a big fan of the Transformers and G.I. Joe books and I remember reading this particular one going, Spider-Man met, met the Transformers. It's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> oh. He's wrapping up Megatron like an at at. Oh my There's, goodness! It's, it's actually like that really old movie. It's a it's a it's a fun issue, and it feels more like the animated series than any of the like the original. Like all of those books, that was the one where I'm like, I see a cartoon in this. Mm. Yeah, really nice. Yeah. Uh, so let's fast forward mm. to the '90s, <laughs> the bygone era, radical, <laughs> extreme, boss, <laughs> hellacious. Who needs feet? Uh, that was my, one of my favorite lines in the Ninja Turtles movie. Because Donatello <laughs> just could not get mm. saying cool yeah. words right. Glasses. Glasses. And then I think at one point he goes, hellacious. Oh, and Michelangelo's like, striker. what? Yeah. <laughs> Smurf. It's the one that stuck with me. Uh, uh, yeah, hellacious stuck. I was like, he just said a naughty word at uh -huh. the beginning of another word. Don, you can't cuss. Don, stop saying bad words. You're my favorite turtle. Um, I love making fun of young me. It's fine. <laughs> uh, so the 90s, so 
It is right and good that he was your favorite. He's the best. He is the best, right? Thank you. All is right and good. Donatello, come at me, chat. Now they're actually going to probably come at me. They really are. Wow. They're going to be cool but rude. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> that, that was my uh, lovely wife's favorite turtles. Raphael. Oh. We've had many a fight over this at our house. Oh, that's adorable. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Raphael was her favorite? Mm-hmm. Explains a lot. Doesn't it? It does. Doesn't it? Donatello, Maybe Raphael? It explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but in a good way. Like, it explains a lot in a good way, right? That too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Mostly explains why she's always wielding size. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. We had wondered. We didn't want to bring it up, but uh, yeah. there. And she's always wearing that, like, red bandana uh -huh. when she jumps into the sewer. Very strange. Uh, so. Awesome. Uh, Marvel and DC have a mostly kind of rocky relationship. They get along, but they're very much trying to beat each other. You know, it's a, they, they have uh, Brand Ech is uh, one code name for the other company. Uh, mm -hmm. Distinguished Competition. Distinguished Competition. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They have a lot of, of joking and serious back and forth. There's a whole thing we won't get into today in the 80s where Marvel maybe was almost going to buy them. That didn't happen. Uh, it was really, like, this book goes into it in pretty good detail. Holy shit, was it close. Like, DC was going to buy Marvel? Marvel was going to buy DC. Gonna buy DC. Mm -hmm. Wow, you keep forgetting yeah. how fortunes, like, Which yeah. is yeah. crazy considering, like, how Marvel essentially sold all the rights to their characters in the 1970s for, like, it was something in there in um, Marvel The Untold Story by Sean Howe. Mm -hmm. How they sold, like, all the rights to their characters for a pittance. It was, it was like, like $1,200. It was like, 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 like $11,000 or something, and all that came out of it was a Spider-Man rock and roll album and a failed stage show. Which was a nice that prequel American to musical. I yeah. want to know about the failed stage show. Yeah, I think it was later rebooted. It was called Turn Off the Dark. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't the same thing, but may as well have been. They, they, I feel like they did a Captain America musical at one point. There was also there was also a ski. A, a, a and there was a ski show. show. Uh, was it a Batman? Marine Land, I think. Or Superman? Like a, a... I definitely remember seeing that image online of all the Justice League on like uh, water skis. On water that skis. I remember. Yeah, sure. That's a, there was a Superman musical. Mm -hmm. What? There was also a Captain yeah. America musical. I think, was, I think it was a Superman musical. When? Yeah, it was Up, Up, and Away. Or no, it's a, yeah. it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Like early 70s, I think. Uh, possibly, yeah, that's sounds and they, right. And they actually, like, used part of that script to help with the movie and then, like, various versions of the movie. There's yeah. a novelization of it, I think, somewhere. I'll dig it up. I'll dig yeah. it up and it'll blow your mind. It'll be great. Yay! Yeah. All right. Comics! Comics. Uh, so, I, 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 I like... I, I'm the 90s. The 90s. So... Uh, comics have become more adult. The direct market has like started to like really like pump new different dollars into the business, and now like this collector's frenzy is starting. That bubble pops, and the uh, uh, like ninety four, ninety five, and uh, lo and behold, in ninety six, they need a miracle to save the industry. Uh, miracle in blue and red denim. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, at the time, uh, at the time, uh, 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 Mike Carlin <laughs> and Mark Gruenwald were the editors, or two of the executive editors at competing companies, and they were really good friends. I think Gruenwald was at Marvel, and uh, uh, Mark Carlin was at DC, and they were Mike Carlin, yeah. tremendously close friends. They had worked together at both companies. They had both like, learn from each other. I think uh, Gruenwald had taught Carlin, like, and helped bring it him up. It's a small business, and people stayed <clears throat> switching back and forth of companies. It yeah. was large, especially because it was largely localized right there in New York City. Yeah. yeah. Like, they were just blocks away from each other. Yeah. Like, they would eat, each, like, at the restaurants across from each other's. They went to the same conventions. Mm -hmm. they, they, they had, yeah. like, weekly softball games and volleyball games and stuff like that. Like, they all knew each other. Like, they were, they were in competition, and there were times when the, the blood was bad, but for the most part, they got along because they kind of needed each other. Especially they recognized the that. Yeah. Um, so Gruenwald and uh, I keep forgetting the last name. Carlin uh, are like, let's let's make this happen. We've been trying. Like we've done like the simple little like Superman and Spider Man. We've done. I think there was an Incredible Hulk and Batman at one point or something like mm -hmm. that. We did that stuff in the late seventies, early eighties. Let's put the universes together. Let's actually do the universes. And they decided. Yeah, it's time, because we're dying. We need <laughs> yeah. an event. We need a giant event. We're friends. We all like each other. So let's do it. And that uh, is where DC versus Marvel comes from. 
And that it's was from those two editors. In, yeah, these, this this was magical and weird and great. And they did. <laughs> the thing that blew my mind with this was that there were winners and losers, which yeah. they were not had not been willing to do before. Yeah, because they it, it, they didn't want to pronounce one company better than mm -hmm. the other. They didn't even want to run the risk of showing favoritism. They're like, we both have equal stakes. That's why I wanted to point out earlier on with that Superman and Spider-Man story, 15 pages, 15 pages, yeah, both paced the exact same, in the exact same way. P if Superman is a splash on one page, the next page is Spider-Man. It is balanced to the panel. And much like when uh, the people got to vote on whether or not poor Robin would uh, be bashed into a pulp. <laughs> talked about it, but Wait, that's a thing that happened. That's a thing we're going to cover. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a whole other you episode. You monster. Yeah. That's that's an episode. We actually have a Robin episode on the docket, so that'll that'll be making it yes. to you. Poor poor Jason Todd. Uh, oh, poor, much like poor Jason thing. Todd, people got to vote, and it's really funny. You could mail in. There was like a little strip at the end, uh, at the end of the first issue, where you could they would tell you some of the upcoming matchups, and you got to fill it out and either mail it in or. They have a bunch of individualized AOL email addresses they made. Whoa. So you could email like dvbatman at AOL.com and be like, I want you to win. <laughs> you need it. Yeah, you need this win, Batman. <laughs> You're going to uh, show them who's I, I think in Batman, the... Batman I have either fought Captain America or Wolverine. It was like Batman versus Captain America. Batman versus... I think in a sewer. It was Batman versus Captain America in a suit. And I haven't reread it. I remember I, it from the time it came out. I remember that. I just reread that one. So here's what's funny about that. Uh, and Chief, I think I have pictures of uh, pulled. Uh, yeah, so oh, here's. There we are. This was at the end of every single one, of every single comic. They ran this. And it gave people at home, like, if you didn't know Batman, even though, like, the 1989 movie had just come out, like, five, six years before. <laughs> Created by Bob Kane. <coughs> Bill Finger. <laughs> Bill Finger. Uh, 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 you could you could learn who they were. Other current aliases matches Malone and Sir Hemingfoot Hemingford Gray. Gray. Hemingfoot Gray. I wish they also had a uh, status for all of these, which was just parents. Yeah. Oh. Oh. None. You'd be surprised how many. <laughs> A uh, lot of orphans and superheroes. Former occupations, soldier, police officer, teacher, illustrator, special agent, fighter, mm. lover, dreamer. Uh, yeah. I love that they say teacher. That's, yeah. that's really a nice nod to the 30s. Because um, that's actually where the golden age Captain America mm -hmm. stopped, um, was as a teacher. I think. I remember. Okay, so, uh, uh, so they do that. They have this poll at the end uh, for you to vote. It but is, And this is the Kids' Choice Awards. It's basically a popularity contest. Yeah, yeah it absolutely is. Which is uh, their way of kind of evening it up, because then they can have a winner, but without somebody arguing over the editors making someone win, they can be like, the fans decided. The fans decided. They may have so, moved around a little bit behind the scenes with those results. Uh, and again, thanks to this book, one of the primary story editors for the entire thing, he wasn't like the writer for all of it, but he was a story, like one of the primary story architects, was Ron Mars. Ron Mars, when he was eight wrote a letter to, I think, Marvel in fucking crayon and said, you guys should do a story where Marvel fights DC. Here's how I would do that. And he wrote out his eight-year-old version wow. of the story and then 30 years later did it. That's incredible. That's I wish I had that kind of drive. I've, I, I usually give up on plans I made earlier on the day. How, but how <laughs> cool is crayon. that? Also in yeah. crayon. Eat lunch. Who's going to eat lunch? Never mind. Yeah. Who's going to eat lunch in this day and age? <laughs> uh, so I just think that's cool. So, uh, they, so I think they had like 11 fights. Mm -hmm. Over four issues. Over four issues. Uh, Storm and Wonder Woman fought. Yep. yep. Thor uh, and Shazam. Thor and Shazam. The, 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 the Flash and Quicksilver had a race. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, so Superman and Hulk. Superman and Hulk. Hulk. Which is a good one. That's a good one. Um, Robin Jubilee, if I recall. Yeah. Yeah. Jubilee, An we'll interesting one. That was less of a fight and more of a... Like, I was so in Jubilee. Um, battle I was flirting. So it was more like... Yeah. Like, like, battle flirting. flirting. That's more a, like a tongue wrestling. Yeah. No, that was definitely... Actually, actually, I'm just going to point this out. Yeah. This is what... This was everything I wanted, and it happened, and this is what we... This is this was the book we wanted. It was Woo! Jubilee and Tim Drake at, making out. At That's right. Eight years old, Ron Mars wrote in crayon, now kiss. Now kiss. <laughs> yeah. Now, now kid. Well, what's hey, interesting kid. about this as well is that, uh, like, there's never been a time where fandom existed and fanfic didn't, but there was a particular flowering 
in the 90s because mm -hmm. the internet had just been invented and it was easier than ever for people to share and all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, it's just, it's interesting with that as background to know that like, they, they knew that the people reading this book could also turn around and read or write their own 75 stories of who should fight and who well, should Well, and, and, and this was a postscript to that story because like they, they kept the character, we'll get to the character who like could hop, dimension hop around again, but like they, they gave him a couple, like four extra issues at the very end of this. And one of them is always the like, I need to go back to the other side for like, because there's like a villain got it like over the wall. Yeah. And literally, Jubilee does the, I need to go back to the other side. She hops over, she's like, Robin, you can go now. <laughs> and it's literally, she's like, leave, leave, leave. It's leave. a Generation X so, outfit. It's a Generation X yeah. outfit. It is this so is good. My time. So, so this is how Robin oh. meets Jubilee. He ties her up and she just basically says, oh, well, you won. And that's it. I know my universe is at stake here and all my friends will be murdered, but I love your fashion. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, you're so handsome. Well, since you put it that and like tied up on the, just was, very I, weird. I was also gonna say, is, is this about the moment where we all suddenly realized that Tim Drake like had some game? Was it was like, cause I know eventually it was like, it all became Tim Drake mm -hmm. has game. <laughs> and, and I think this is when uh, DC figured it out for sure. Okay, yeah. cause oh. I was like, even as a kid, I remember those first Robin books. Like, this kid has game. This kid <laughs> does, I want to I grow up to be Tim Drake. I want to figure uh, out I'm who Batman cool, is. I'm not cool enough to grow up to be Tim Drake. Like, I don't know anyone who is. <laughs> Maybe Matt this... Mercer is cool enough to grow up to be Tim Drake. Maybe. <laughs> Matt Mercer probably is Tim, Tim Drake. Drake. Let's, Let's be, be fair. fair. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Oh, uh, man, we've been doing this, this show way too long. If Matt Mercer accidentally won a fight by tying up a girl and she was like, hey, handsome, he, he wouldn't be like, well, you can put it that way. He'd be like, I'm so sorry. Oh, my Are God. You okay? Like, uh, there's no way he's. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That's actually a good point. He would be like, just I'm say. happily married. Let's... Where did I learn these I love my wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just the darkness came over where, me. Where and did I learn? Where am I? Thank you. That is that is that is my new inside my head. That's a whole new Venture Brothers episode. Yeah. <laughs> where did I learn these knots? Uh, uh, this, Matt Mercer is Tim Drake. Matt Key. Oh come on, Chief. This also like uh, Marvel versus DC, DC versus Marvel also features the exact opposite of Tim Drake, which is a complete lack of game in some instances. Oh Like man. when you first see these uh, heroes and villains crossing over, there's like unexpected things, like the X Men see Nightwing on a roof and attack him and Batman like intervenes to make sure that like Nightwing's okay but then Wolverine and Gambit carjack the yeah. Batmobile and <laughs> Nightwing is Nightwing just goes told you you should have got the club Batman the club the club which if you don't remember was just like a tiny crowbar you'd put on your steering wheel so people couldn't steal it the club yeah that's what Batman needs on the yeah. Batmobile the most technologically Wolverine advanced can definitely car definitely be stopped by the club uh huh yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, oh, my adamantium claws can't slice this. <laughs> Defeated by the club. That's his weakness. I, I, I pulled that image too, Chief. It, it, it just did, did you bless you? Yeah, Wol Wolvie and Gambit jack ba the Batmobile. It's uh, pretty incredible. It's pretty amazing. Oh, man, this is bringing back so many happy memories. Yeah, so, yeah. so here's the, essentially, here's the story. <laughs> uh, two cosmic entities uh, without gender, but referred to as brother, though they admit, like, they have no gender. We're just calling them brothers. Uh, oh, yeah, there we are. Like you do. Oh, what, my God. The blue, They're DC, famous. the red, Marvel. Uh, and uh, they are at odds with each other. They have forgotten each other that exists for a billion years, but they've recently awakened, and they hate the other. Uh, well, that's the end. You just spoiled the end. Chief? He has a weird chin. You yeah, put the image in there? No, but uh, it, didn't mean, it didn't, didn't mean for the show now. <laughs> Uh, I, as if we know. I'm just kidding. Like, there's no spoiler. Everyone. There's no spoilers because there's not really. Like, this is not, not really much of a story. <laughs> uh, but but that did kind of like after again reading Slugfest and seeing how much they fought with each other and then getting like a four issue like punch punch punch. We all hate each other, but we're trying to make it work. And then the two brothers that have been at odds with each other since the beginning of time, i.e., when comics were created, mm -hmm. shaking hands, going. You've done well. I was like, oh, oh, oh you, they, they have done well. They have done well. And then they, and then they did the peanut butter and chocolate, and they got peanut butter on their, on their, and then, and then it chocolate got weird. Mixed and yeah, weird. it got so weird. It got then so they had weird. Not next. And then there was an allergic reaction to the peanuts, and they did the clone saga. Yeah. So, oh, oh, oh. Um, oh. Have so, you guys done that episode? Nope. 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 That's a. <laughs> Uh, so, so <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll eventually, someone's going to come along and demand we do that episode. I'll be very excited for whoever thinks is going to take. So when the two, when the two entities, cosmic entities, recognize each other and start screaming at each other, the two universes start to bleed over 
and for two issues, the heroes and villains are popping in and out of each other's reality, and they don't know what's going on. And then when they finally start putting it together, they're at odds with each other, they start fighting, but then they realize, oh, wait, this is not how this is supposed to happen. We should be working together. Uh, but as soon as they realize that, um, the character known as Access, who you Access. were talking about. Thank you, Access. Access, uh, uh, fun she trivia. Denim-tastic. Denim-tastic. Fun trivia, the only character 100% 50-50 co-owned by Marvel and DC. Really? Yep, the only <laughs> character 100% co-owned by both. Who owned the homeless guy he talks to? <laughs> He also has the girlfriend who keeps standing up for things. Like, oh, yeah. He's got this girlfriend he just keeps going, who's just like, where are you going? I'm like, oh, I kept I America. can't oh, tell you that. Mary Lane. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very weird. Whoop, whoop. Uh, uh, but he's the only one who can bounce between the two universes at will and presumably still can. Uh, so he sees that the only way to save like, the two universes is from weird cardboard there. box TARDIS. <laughs> <laughs> Forgotten him almost completely, I think. Yeah. Oh, can it's we, weird. Can we, it's... can we bring an image of, of, of access up? Is, is, is there an can image? We have a... uh, I, I, I'm I'll pull sure one up there if is. I have. Yeah, uh, I'm sure that there is. We're putting poor Chief through the ring. Uh, Chief knows what he's in for, man. Uh, uh, but uh, he decides that the only way to save both universes from ultimate destruction, which is what will happen, like the heroes and the heroes of each universe have to fight each other until only one exists, mm -hmm. essentially. And the, bro the, the two cosmic entities will, will reside by that. That's how they're, we'll pit our heroes against each other. That will decide who the sure. better universe is. Yeah. We need a contest of champions, but for both. For both universes. We won't call that. Uh, so, Some other name. Uh, yeah, here's Access. Oh. Right. Uh, oh. The that red of Marvel, guy. the blue of DC. Whoa. Look at that good wide boy. He's just... it as a box because that's what I want it to be. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, he wanted it to be a box. The the other cosmic shard of the previous universe hi, where the hi, other doctor. two are from. Yeah. Yes. It's his long box that he uses to travel <laughs> between dimensions. Oh, my God. Hey. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Actually You're... missed that. Yeah, wow. wow. That, that makes me... Light, light on wow. my head. life right oh, there. <laughs> That's great. So he decides that the only way to save the two universes is by Mush amalgamating them. the two universes. What? Uh, but in the meantime, he embeds... Yeah. Uh, the Amalgam okay. Age of Comics. Let's see. We've got uh, Dark Claw, uh, Super Soldier, Doctor Super Soldier. Strange Fate, Doctor Strange yeah. Fate. Uh, is that? It's that. Uh, oh God! What's the? It's Craven and Cheetah. Is it? Uh, uh, oh God! I'm. Uh, well, it's Nightcrawler and Creeper, but I don't remember what they call it. And Amazon. Doctor that's... Doctor Doomsday. Oh my God! You're right. It is Doctor, Doctor Doomsday. Doomsday. Who did they? I forget who they mash up with Gambit. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, that, that's a that's a what a Green, Green Lantern's son. Obsidian? Obsidian. It's Obsidian. Oh my God! Really? Whoa! Yeah, from the uh, that was either Whoa. Patrol or. Uh, and then Amazon is Wonder Woman and Storm. Mm -hmm. uh, Ooh, good old Spider Boy. Spider Boy. Spider Boy. Or Super Super Boy. Uh, not featured here. Lobo the Duck. We were talking. Yes. Lobo the Duck. Lobo the Duck. Yeah. Um, yeah. You heard that right, Lobo the, the duck. duck. By the way, Superboy in this is just a total scumbag. Total you scumbag. You meet him and he's like, he's just like lifting two bikini babes on his shoulders. Right. Using oh, his yeah. tactile telekinesis. Yes. Yeah. Do you, do you remember what they did to the Fantastic Four? Challengers of the Fantastic. Fantastic. Well done. So impressive. Yep. Uh, yep. I didn't. I, I didn't read the whole thing. Bruce, uh, Bruce Wayne, Agents Generation of Shield. Where they went and wherever they went at the time, and that was uh, they got the the Dial H matchup, right? Mm -hmm. um, it was absurd. Not Generation Hex, although Generation Hex was really good. Yeah, was, I yeah. also read Generation Hex. I think there was Old West Husk, which was ridiculous. <laughs> Just imagine uh, Josh Brolin in the Generation X movie from the 90s. <laughs> Magneto, <laughs> Magneto and the Magnetic right Men. There's Lobo the Duck. Lobo the Duck. The duck. Uh, Speed Demon. X-Patrol, obviously. Of oh, course. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, oh, man, which at the time I had so little Thorian. context for. I was Who? Coming out Thorian of, of, the new, of the New Gods? Oh. Ryan, yeah. Ryan, yeah. Ooh. Um, X-Patrol. Oh, so, uh, so here's what happens. Uh, they do uh, uh, the, uh, the DC versus Marvel book number three. And then for the next couple weeks, the only books that DC and Marvel are releasing, I think, are the Amalgam books. Mm -hmm. right, am I right in the publication, that or am I wrong? I remember. Uh, that's how I remember it, too. This was, this was, I was reading books. Before this would have been the 90s. Apocalypse. 
Uh, I feel like this was before Age of Apocalypse. I think this may have been before. I, but they're in their Generation X outfits, and Apocalypse Age of Apocalypse. It may have been after the, also. After Gen X 4. Oh, man, really? Yeah. I, all I can remember is the Golden Apple was still open on Pico. <laughs> that's how I, oh, my God. That's how, oh my God. I, that's how I grade everything is I was seeing these on the shelves at the Pico store, and the Pico yeah. store was, uh, so I was still in high school Let when these came right out. Uh, so it, but for the next couple weeks, they have yeah. these books, the yeah, yeah, yeah. books that are also coming out. Uh, and then they, they uh, come back to um, uh, DC versus Marvel number four and finish off the series mm -hmm. a couple weeks later. Um, uh, and I think it was a weekly release. Maybe I'm wrong. I can't remember exact. Uh, that exact, I can't remember. Uh, maybe it was monthly. Um, so, yeah, and then they, the whole thing ends. But when it ends, they then go on to the Amalgam Comics uh, all, called mm -hmm. All Access um, and uh, finish up, like, a kind of a story from there. So, uh, and again, Slugfest gets into it. But part of the plan that the uh, two Marks had created, or the two Mikes, or Mark Grunewald Mark and, and Mike, Mark and Mike had created. They sound like candy. Was that they were going yeah. to put Marvel writers on DC properties and DC writers on Marvel properties. And they were just going to play for the next year. And then, uh, but, but relations kind of chilled mm. from there. I can't remember why exactly, but relations chilled. So, but like, how amazing would that have been? Like, what a sh what a handshake! So, like, that handshake of, you've done well mm -hmm. was like so well intentioned by these two executive editors. So, yeah, it's like, huh, if only that could have been fun. Um, so, I kind of want to go over how the vill the heroes defeated each other because I think it's kind of fun. Okay. So, Thor beats Captain Marvel, aka Shazam. When he he pins him under a, oh, like a, a, roller a Ferris coaster. wheel or like roller they're at, coaster, they're, at yeah. amusement they're fighting park. in an amusement park, and we then should, uh, maybe shout out the I because I was looking at the time and it is uh, April and May 1996. In in between they had the you, all the, you were right uh, between three and four all the amalgam things came out. The series of DC versus Marvel was written by Ron Mars and Peter David with art by Dan oh, Jurgens and David. Claudio Castellini. Thank you. Um, according to Wikipedia. Uh, and again, that's always like a balancing act between the two. Like, well, do you, who, who do you want to write it? We'll get an artist for it. Like, they switch yeah. off and stuff like that. So, uh, but, uh, so Shazam gets pinned, or Captain Marvel gets pinned by the Ferris wheel roller coaster or whatever at the amusement park. And he's like, I can get out of this by reverting to my childlike form. Billy Batson does that. And then Thor's like, your power comes from lightning. Interesting. But before that, <laughs> Thor's like, interesting. You have a weaker alter ego, but at least yours doesn't have a lame leg. And he's like, let me introduce you to a kid called Freddy sometime. Yeah, it's like, oh, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> like, Don't worry, I've got that covered as well. Uh, I guess it's supposed to be cute. But yeah, it was yeah it, it, baby cute at the time. And... Uh, even back then, we were like, oif. Uh, so it Thor oif. Inter intercepts the lightning uh, and defeats... Yeah. Captain Marvel that way. Mm -hmm. But then his... He drops Mjolnir. Mjolnir, <laughs> Mjolnir gets knocked Whoops. out of his hand and flies away to where Wonder Woman finds yeah. it. And she goes, huh. It's an interesting enchantment on this, like, this oh, hammer. Oh, it looks like an ancient Norse war hammer. <laughs> yeah, she like calls it out. She's like, bloop. And then she picks it up. Because she's Wonder, Wonder Woman. She's Wonder Woman oh, and she's worthy. She'd be worthy. Is. Ugh. It's, it's, it's definitely. What is that outfit? Yeah. God, why did I It was a simpler and categorically so dumber time. I put up with so much as a kid. This is the, dumber. like, my, I was using my okay, first I, Wonder Woman comic, and I remember it because she's badass and she picks up the hammer, and my standards were already being like, this is what I just had to well, deal and, with. All right, and, fine. And I, and I just want to point out, because I'm having this at the moment, I do not remember it being this bad either. This is like, that's a whole nother layer. I we like, all had Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, man. Like, that was, we were all that was like, well, lot. this is what we get. I all guess right. this is art. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess this is character. But um, she throws the hammer away because mm -hmm. it's an unfair advantage because she's Wonder Woman. She's Wonder Woman. And then Storm beats her with lightning. Because <laughs> Storm's awesome. And lightning is a little OP, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, it's very OP in this universe. because lightning. It, yeah, it beats Wonder Woman. <laughs> Uh, uh, no one knows how Wolverine beats Lobo because they're both R-rated characters in a G-rated book. Mm -hmm. So that defeat happens behind a bar off panel and uh, Wolverine just like happened. stands up behind the bar and I think he's got Lobo's cigar and he goes, says something like, don't call me bastard or yeah, something like yeah. that. Bum. It's like, how did he win? I don't oh, watch you. Yeah. Got you. <laughs> yeah. 
And it all happens off, off panel. Because there's no way you could have shown that it would have made any sense. Yeah. 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 I remember yeah. Wolverine I remember wins. Like, huh? I'm not even. I'm not necessarily the biggest Lobo fan on earth, but I don't know how I feel about that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He wins. That's how he won. Lobo, I guess, is dead. Lobo should have should have had a more popular comic book at the time. Yeah. At the he time, yeah. Called. He should have been a more interesting character. Period. <laughs> what? Oh, I do not like Lobo. <laughs> Uh, so that's about, I guess it's, it's 820. That's like three we should, models yeah. in a row. Who, who, who were some of the DC winners? I mean, Robin, obviously. Flash. We've got Jubilee. Yeah. Uh, Flash beats. The Flash Quicksilver Quick one's interesting because they're like sort of racing each other and like just peppering each other with blows. But mm -hmm. then uh, they sort of accidentally wind up creating a shockwave that like is about to detonate this tanker truck and there's like two innocent people in there. Mm. And Quicksilver is just obsessed with winning, but Flash stops to save them. And then Quicksilver punches Flash when his guard is down, but then he has like a crisis of confidence where he's like, huh, some way to beat a guy. I wonder if I would have done the same thing, some friend I would be. And then Flash is like, huh, too slow, just pummels Quicksilver. Yeah, so he's like, oh, was that an asshole move? I think I may have been yeah. an asshole. I don't want to be an asshole. Boom! Punch. <laughs> yeah. Pietro, you've done it again. <laughs> which, interestingly, I never put together, but uh, I don't know who wrote which pieces. But if Ron Mars and Peter David were the primary writers on this, Peter David is prominently associated with doing a lot of really great character work on Quicksilver. Interesting. Um, he's the one who did the psychiatrist issue where we, we first get the insight that. into Which is one of the greatest yeah, X-Factors of, of all time. Yeah, one of the all-time Quicksilver stories. Yeah. Uh, and it's one of the places where you find out that the big difference between Flash and Quicksilver is Flash is faster than Quicksilver, but thinks it at relatively normal speed, whereas Quicksilver thinks actually at the speed that he moves, even though yeah. he's not nearly as fast as the These answers will yeah. vary comic to comic, but that is- They vary comic to different. comic, but yeah. it is a thing that they, it is a thing that has kind of been, kind of been uh, pushed into the soil at this point, so. Yeah, um, so uh, I'm trying, so uh, Superman beats Hulk, mm -hmm. though I can't remember, he just like, it's just a punch fest. Batman, yeah, Batman, Batman beats Captain America. America. But that is like the most like Boba Fett like that's the most so, like, I know I know so like the, so so the companies did not want to declare a winner between Captain America and Batman, so the two of them are fighting in a sewer, and then there's a sewage release, and it overcomes Captain America and he is underwater and Batman saves him and pulls him up. But then it's Captain America who pulls the manhole cover and pulls up Batman. So something, <laughs> something happens where like they both kind of save each yeah. other, partially off panel. And they're the two that sort of wise up to what's going on before any of the other heroes as yeah. well. Mm. Well, and it's them that Access grabs hold of, yeah. Like this is the most like, Boba Fett was just like bopped into the Sarlacc pit. Like what, that's how he was beat? What? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Got you. Hey, God. And then it pulls him up. It's, yeah, it's a yeah. thing. Uh, but Gold. it was. Gold. <laughs> uh, but, like, they, with those two characters in particular, they did not want to see, they didn't want to de declare a winner. Yeah. So they kind of cheated a little bit. Cheated a little bit. Comics. But Access then puts a cosmic shard into each of them mm. before he amalgamates everything. So that if he ever has to separate the two, there's a piece of both Each cosmos universe, yeah. and yeah, cosmos is in them. What I do find interesting about this as well is that like Batman without, you know, is either the most or second most, depending on what fraction of a second you're looking at, but generally the most popular successful character on the DC side. Yeah. And Captain America was sort of more of a figurehead mm -hmm. at the time. He was not the like, Best selling, I'm in seven books. No, that was uh, X Men and Wolverine. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that was, and so he's it's just interesting. So, he's emblematic. Yeah. It was more about what they meant, I think, exactly. in that particular case, rather than like these two are the obvious. Well, and they're both like Golden Age characters, except in Marvel's case, he's kind of their only Golden Age character. Not yeah. like, not. Name one's so mad at you right now? No, but like. Did, but, is that a oh, Namor and Aquaman. Aquaman. Oh my God, Namor, Namor the Namor and Aquaman fight. A whole oh, that's, thing. A, that's truly a wild ass ending. That is, that is a, that is I a don't great. What happens in that one? Oh, oh. <laughs> Casey, take it. Uh, Casey, so take it. they're fighting underwater, and Aquaman just keeps like dunking on Namor, being like, "Oh, you're so high key thick, you can't punch me. I'm faster than you." And then Namor punches him out of the water onto land. And He's like, "Take that, King of Atlantis, yeah. whatever." And he. Namor basically is just, he winds up sort of monologuing it. Peak Aquaman. Namor. 
yes. Geek Namor mouthing Aqu off to Aquaman. Aquaman distracts him long enough to drop an orca on yeah. him. Yeah! Crushing yes! Namor. He's like, yeah, don't forget, I can talk to marine life. Yeah, he's like, that, here's the thing, though. Aquaman's like, that's your problem, Namor. You're too honorable to cheat. And I'm like... That is not That's true. That is not so true. not true. Namor is a scumbag, but I love so him. So not true. Namor does not recognize your rule. Yeah. <laughs> I am the rule. <laughs> yeah. Namor. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's a little out of... You really misunderstand uh, Namor. Yeah, you guys are really from different universes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Arthur Curry? Yeah. Oh, man, that's so funny. I totally forgot about that one. That's the big one that yeah, I was forgetting. Like, just drop a freaking whale on him. Just drop a whale. And by the way, how's the whale? Is the whale still alive? Did you just sacrifice an entire like that, that whale died but oh, man, was immortalized as Aquaman Fudgy too. the Whale. It's 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 Hook Aquaman. Whale. It's Hook Aquaman with yeah. the beard and the chrome. Oh, man. Now oh. you're immobilized. That's your weakness, Namor. You're too noble to cheat. No, he ain't. Nope. <laughs> So not true. Nope. <laughs> kind of Namor won in the end because yeah. he fooled Aquaman. Kind of. You think about it. I'm from just going to chill down here until he leaves. That's true. He's like, he may be under a whale, but he's going, you don't know me. You don't Wait know till me. the cabal hears about this. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, man, that's a whole nother episode. Uh, Secret uh, Wars. We'll do that one eventually. Oh. Uh, so, uh, so that happens. Fast forward to uh, uh, the, the early 2000s. Cute. Nice, Chief. Uh, fast forward to the early 2000s, I think it's 2003, where we get uh, the last uh, company crossover, JLA slash Avengers. And this mm -hmm. is legit a classic. One of the, it's yeah, amazing. One of the rare cases is so where it's actually good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, this is. I oh, want to say man, Busiek I want, and Perez. Kurt Busiek is Busiek and, and yep. Perez. Perez. So, another, again, going back to Slugfest, uh, and I was not expecting to have this resource, and I'm so glad that I have it. Uh, Perez was originally going to do uh, the uh, Avengers Justice League crossover in the early 80s. Oh, wow. So they, they had it planned. They had it written. They had, uh, Perez had done a lot of artwork for it already, and then the book just never happened. And that's one of the biggest reasons Perez left Marvel. Like, he was doing stuff with Marvel at the time, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that happened. He's like, yeah, these guys can go screw themselves. I'm, I'm out. Like... Because it was, he saw it as Marvel's fault that that book didn't happen, mostly because of Jim Shooter. He's like, Jim Shooter's, I don't like that guy. Like, I'm going to go over to DC now and do a little book called Wonder Woman. It worked out okay. Yeah. I think we're all richer for it. Yeah, we're all richer for it. Uh, but man, can that dude draw? Yes. Oh my God, these pages are burned into my retinas. From there is so. How do you put so many costumes on one page? And you have maybe picked up the name George Perez from our episodes. Of oh, oh my God. He did Crisis on Infinite Earths. Uh, he is famous for the, like, there is no number of characters you can cl specify that Perez cannot deliver on one page. It is frankly ridiculous. That's awesome. Didn't my, he my, do my the, favorite Kyle Rayner Green Lantern. Didn't he do, like, yeah. a, the majority of Infinity Gauntlet as well? Oh, yeah. Uh, he did, a, I, a big, good a chunk, chunk of it. A good yeah. chunk of it. Um, um, so uh, then there's a bunch of characters on this on, on this page of uh, who's on there. Everybody! And yeah. you're just like, oh, yeah. God. Well, and that's not even the busiest cover. No, nowhere near. Uh, uh, Chief, if you can find the cover for issue number three of this series. Whoa, this wow. This one is bizet. Yeah, like this one is so dense, you can't even see half the characters, the issue number three. Uh, uh, so, uh, but JLA Avengers is the, the, the dream that was, dr that was dreamt in the early 80s and never recognized, finally done 25 years later-ish. <laughs> uh, and it's, look at that. I mean, yeah, like why not? Ah, uh, like that was a poster everyone wanted. Yeah, there, there were there are in universe shots like this where they because uh, I I think that they bragged that they I, I could be remembering this wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that they said that basically throughout this book they got like every member of the Justice League in the background of some panel somewhere in these issues. Oh, it's does it, like Big Bertha is in this like. A member of the Great Lakes Avengers in the mid 2000s. That's as, as far this, as I this, know and her. This was before, and I and this I, I say this seriously: the Big Bertha Renaissance that we are currently having. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this was back when that the was, rebirth, the rebirth, the re rebirth. <laughs> you are the pun master. God, it's just so <laughs> on today. Uh, <laughs> and I only know this because we have a friend who who 
dressed up as Big Bertha for our, for our, our Jenny Newman, book. Jenny Newman, who made my Incredible. Doctor Strange costume. Uh, yeah, dressed up as Big Bertha for our for the your uh, for for my lovely wife's birthday. birthday party, oh, your Avengers Britney's birthday party. party. Yeah. So if if I can praise a specific thing that I really enjoyed about a few years ago when I finally sat down and read JLA Avengers, uh, I thought it was very interesting because like as a kid I read the popcorn one. I read yeah. DC versus Marvel. It wasn't. It didn't really make sense and it wasn't really supposed to. It was this. It like, was just fun toy mash. Yeah, and and it was like your universes are sort of confronting each other in the form of these two immortal beings, but it wasn't really about like trying to say something about them. Mm. And JLA Avengers has what just very interesting things to say about the two universes. Mm. I, I distinctly remember reading uh, and being very surprised, especially by because I was coming to it several years later and the, the companies had changed to a certain extent. But when you read JLA Avengers, uh, a bunch of the DC heroes end up on Marvel's Earth, mm -hmm. and the first person that they run into is the Punisher. And essentially, right. what they, oh, they, right. they immediately are like, what kind of world Where is this? Where are we? These are your heroes? This is your Batman's hero? Batman's like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> well, and if... at the time, it was sort of like, Marvel is the messed up universe. The X-Men are feared and hated. Yeah. And DC is like, bright and shiny and all of this. And what's interesting is like, in the years since, once you get to Identity Crisis, kind of once you get to other flipped. stuff, now it's, it's like there's flipped. so much grimdark everywhere. I, yeah. I yeah. even love like weird, weird trivia, pieces of strange trivia. It never occurred to me like the fact that the DC Universe Earth is bigger. Yeah. They're actually comparing the two Earths and one is huh. actually a little larger. bit bigger. Yeah. I had forgotten that. Because there's yeah. extra cities. Because because there are no, uh, there, aren't, there aren't, almost yeah, there's no, no, there's no Conduct in uh, there's, Earth 6. There's not a lot of made up cities in the Marvel Universe, whereas you have to fit Gotham and, and, and in Metropolis, Metropolis yeah. Haven, Coast and City, Keystone yeah. City and Coast City. So th that Earth is actually slightly bigger. And they like talk about it. Like, more, like there's like. Yeah, they kind of justified like, a few what things a about the. Yeah. Thought. Yeah. You know, there's like, oh, wait, how do we. How do we rationalize this? Like, there, we have That's to explain fun. these giant metropolises that we have just There's all like across the country. Why are you putting all the exits yeah. like Judge well, Dredd over here? Yeah. And, Mega cities. <laughs> and going off of what you're saying, I remember that page distinctly because mm -hmm. there's a lot of, uh, Busiek and Perez had a lot of fun with each other with the way that the story was told and unfolded in the panels uh, because on that page, uh, the Justice League had gone to different p parts of the Earth to find, of, of the Marvel Earth uh, 616 Earth to find these artifacts like the Infinity Gauntlet, the Wand of Watum. Uh, it was essentially like um, uh, 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 not a red herring. What's the, the MacGuffin. MacGuffin? It's like a MacGuffin story where like the there's six artifacts from the DC universe and six artifacts from the Marvel universe that they all have to bring together to the Grand Master and Metron in order to save the universe. You'll remember double. Metron is the knowledge guy from earlier, and Grandmaster, you all are familiar with. Is Jeff Goldblum. Oh, is Jeff Goldblum. Is, Gold. is in yeah. fact, uh, in our universe, is yeah. Jeff Goldblum. I would yeah. love, if we gastrophatic. I would though, yeah. truly love if they ever bring Metron into the DCEU, uh, if they just cast Jeff Goldblum as well. Oh, my well, God. I mean, like, that would I be... I feel about that for about most things they can do. Yeah. Jeff oh, that's so <laughs> smart. Evan um, um, DeVernay, get on it. I, I I I do I, I at this point because I know we're, we're we're starting to we're starting to crawl towards the end of the episode yeah. quite yet but one of the things that's always fascinating about these stories is the notion of recontextualization of the idea of like the the there's I, I was trying to think about this because I was reading all these other crossovers that we haven't gotten into these these multi mm -hmm. multi uh, universe crossovers and where they succeed and where they fail and often where there's a, there's a direction of how you find two very in, incongruous uh, ideas and put them in the same story together. Mm -hmm. Something like Archie versus Punisher, which is a real book. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Boy, is it. Is yep. So is Archie versus Predator. Archie versus Predator. There's a lot of them. Uh, do you make do you make the Punisher an Archie character and do you soften the Punisher or do you or do you darken Archie or do you dark Archie? Dark. Or yeah. Which which or do you kind of do you just see what happens when you drop the Punisher into into Riverdale, or do you there watch what go. happens to, or do you watch what happens to Archie when he goes to a real city in the Marvel Universe, or do you find a brand new context for these two characters mm -hmm. to meet that doesn't favor either of them? Mm. And these are just so many different ways that you can have this conversation and what and like and what all you the can answers say about to them. that question are interesting. Are are, are interesting because I was I was uh, I delved in. There's a there's a 
Hanna Barbera series of Hanna Barbera DC crossovers that have been coming out, which recently. are phenomenal. They are, but it's it's interesting because it's not really a Hanna Barbera DC crossover. Mm -hmm. It's a what if Hanna Barbera existed in the DC? Yeah, universe. like the Elmer Fudd uh, Batman one is particularly good, where it's just like uh, Elmer. Fudd. I've been reading Super Sons. The one I've been enjoying was Super Sons versus. Um, this is a collection. Um, see, this mm -hmm. uh, down a lot. Super of Sons mean Falcon and, and Dino Mutt. Oh Dino Mutt. That uh, just came out. Which yeah, which you're like, oh, that sounds really cute and adorable, but like I'm, I mean like. I'm gonna. They, they've they've DC contextualized these characters. So if yeah. you're expecting the Falcon and Dino Mutt, you're you're not really. I mean, like you're you're gonna get a really. Um, what was interesting is the the there was the, there's, whoa. there's a cyborg Dino Mutt like sitting over like whoa leading out and having his eyes like because like you said that one's very DC. But when you got to uh, there was a like uh, a Wonder Woman Tasmanian Devil backup that they did in mm -hmm. the Looney Tunes ones a couple mm -hmm. years ago. And it was like, it was two different stories, I think, but the backup was very much like a cartoon style that was not strictly Looney Tunes, Tasmanian Devil, but with the sort of place them both a little closer to an equal footing, like that it was out of both of their naturalistic styles. Sure. It was a, a cartoon version and it was really great. This is this is more of a recontextualization. Uh, but I, and I'll say wow. I actually really enjoyed yeah. it. I, 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 I weirdly found like, a, so there we are. So not the one I'm talking no. about. It's the main story. And this was definitely an example of like trying to put Taz in a DC style. And then there was this backup that went with it that was much more cartoony. So you kind of got both approaches in one. That is super Black cool. Lightning, Hong Kong Fooey was also like almost a little too noir. To, it was like it was like almost too noir for me. Whoa. Uh, yeah, there's also, uh, what was I? I haven't read Flash Speed Buggy special yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm still, uh, I, I have a copy of uh, Aquaman and Jabberjaw sitting on my desk that I need to read. Yep. I mean, come on. The shark's like, I can talk, that's special. And Aquaman's like, that's Tuesday. I can only that's, talk. Um, <laughs> I, I will say, I, I also, I wanted to mention one of my favorite, I know this is not everybody's cup of tea, but one of my favorite recontextualizations uh, where they just took a new universe and put two tastes that honestly actually have a lot in common was one of my favorite Transformers G.I. Joe cross crossovers. Because uh -huh. I love a good Transformers mm -hmm. G.I. Joe crossover. Uh, they got uh, 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 John Ryber and Jay Lee. They got Jay Lee to draw a... World oh. War II, 1938. Oh my God! GI Joe Transformers what? crossover. That with, sounds amazing. And it's and it's it's a, it's a heavy read. And like I just want to show this amazing, this amazing. The artwork is really Ravage beautiful. Ravage versus Snake Eyes there. That's happening. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you have it in there. Um, it's beautiful and it's dark and fascinating and like and it's a really I really enjoy. It's it's, it's got a, like a little occult vibe. Um, the artwork in it is is absolutely. It stunning. is it is not everybody's story wise. It is not everybody's cup of tea. Although I'm I will admit I'm a fan of it. So, uh, but like it's it, I definitely know and like just every piece wow. is stunning in this book. Just, it's a very dark book and it's got a lot of heavy inks and oh god these like. This but some some of my favorite stuff about what they do is like they'll do panels of like here's GI Joe characters talking or, or characters with Cobra or whatever, but then they'll come across a transformer and all of a sudden. It's a full page because the Transformers mm. are too big. massive. And you'll see like the two characters that you were just following down in the foreground. Look at that Starscream. Sorry. I'm but like sorry. you'll see like a giant like Megatron or Starscream. Here, I'll, Optimus, I'll pull up the Starscream. Like screen taking here. up an entire page though. And it's it's really great use of the page and the, sure. and the layout yeah. to really show the size. Uh, uh, difference. It's 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 a fascinating take and it kind of takes everybody out of their element a little bit in a in a kind of fun way. Uh what other crossover stuff did you want to talk about? Uh, I want to briefly mention some of the great, oh yeah, I'm like, I've got- Oh no, please, go ahead. Um, we talked, the one I wanted to talk about most was DC versus Marvel, because that's the instant one that I go to, so I'm yeah. happy to talk about anything else. We can talk more about Archie meets the Punisher if you want, which I think is a great example of balancing the tones of both, because you go back and forth between, mm -hmm. like, War Journal, I ventured Riverdale. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, go soak your head, Archie. I'm not going to the stock hop with you. And it's such a wild story because a drug lord who looks exactly like Archie, but, like, heavier <laughs> eyebrows and, and, like, buck teeth, yeah, buck comes teeth. to town and starts, like, aggressively hitting on Veronica and, like, impressing her dad and winds up taking her to the sock hop and he tries to get fresh with her. And then Archie and Punisher take him down. <laughs> there we are. Yeah, uh, but there, there's and, and micro is oh, there. Oh, micro's yeah, there. Micro's there. Yeah, micro's there. The yep. There's there. truly a great moment in there where 
you see close-ups of Archie's eyes and the Punisher's eyes, and reflected in Archie's eyes is Frank Castle's scowling face. <laughs> and then it just shows them staring at each other. Ooh, like Archie's this. gulping and the Punisher is just staring and they're both thinking the same thought bubble. What did I do to deserve this? Yep. <laughs> Who drew this one? This is. I can't oh my yes. God, look at that. I mean, it's wonderful. It's exactly what you're talking about, where sometimes you can get really amazing results by, by just letting them each live in their separate styles, and you get that sort of Roger Rabbit effect. It's really yeah. intense. Yes. Well, it's similar to what they did with like Conan meets Gru. Where it's like, mm. Bruce this very cartoonish, mad magazine, like, waka, waka, waka. The Wanderer is a series of hilarious uh, fantasy adventures by Sergio Aragonis, who you know from Mad Magazine, mm -hmm. which is what he was just referring to. And Conan, of course, is the Conan classic. Conan the like, oh, yeah. Oh. What Barbarian. is best in life? Yeah. Crossovers. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, but my, so at the end of that, there's, uh, there's a very s small nod to Wolverine meets Jughead. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, at the end, at the very end, they like sort of tease the next one, and the, you, I don't think it happened. But no, like it's, a, it's more just uh, like, a, oh, here's what's coming next, and it's like you're telling me this is the most dangerous mutant on earth. Well, I'm coming for you, bub. And you see claws pop through a picture of Jughead. Of Jughead. We don't know why he's. Yeah, there well, we go. Well, to be fair, he is a werewolf later. So yeah, <laughs> that is true. There is very a werewolf true. Jughead. The hunger. Uh, the I hunger. need more than burgers. Oh my I, God. I, I also want to give a little love to the amazing Archie meets the Ramones, which mm -hmm. is a great special. <laughs> Less of a crossover and more you can put anything in the Archie universe and it works. Yeah. It's like when Scooby Doo would just meet like the Harlem Globetrotters. But the, the other great book. Oh man, Scooby Doo's been meeting all the DC heroes in a book called Scooby Doo Team Up for several yes. years now, which I just need to shout out because it's fabulous. So good. And then the other thing they're doing right now is there's a great DC, DC Archie uh, crossover, which is the Harley and Ivy meet uh, Betty and Veronica. They oh, just wow. did this mini series. And they, they just ran this mini series where. The, the thing is that uh, the, the Lodge Industries is going to like destroy some wetlands to build some stuff. Oh, my God. <laughs> and Poison Ivy is like, hell no. Happy. And they, they're gonna they're they're gonna kidnap they're gonna kidnap uh, Veronica is the plan is, is good old fashioned eco terrorists well yeah. and, well and the thing that happens of course is that they go to this costume party where they're supposed to show up and like Harley and Ivy get into their classic outfits to try and infiltrate yeah. the party, but uh, Betty and Veronica dress up as modern Harley and Ivy incredible so they're in the new fifty two <laughs> Betty and Veronica are in the new fifty two no. Harley and Ivy oh yes Harley and Ivy being the oh, classic oh my gosh. It's, Amazing. Oh, it's that amazing. is so fun. <laughs> uh, uh, and the no. art is just. And it's by Mark and Draco and Paul Dini. Yeah. Mm. Wait, and Draco's doing that? And Draco and, worked oh, on it. Oh, yeah. He's got to he, 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 have him on. He wants to come back on. We need to have him back on. And another good one that uh, I believe you and I were discussing mm -hmm. earlier is uh, Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, my God. Two of like, them. Three yes. of them now? Yeah, they, they, oh my so god! Nice, they did it twice. I, and they or, did the like. Speaking of the different approaches, they've now had like both the comic book version of the turtles and the animated version of the turtles in separate crossovers. Uh, I, I had no idea how badly the world needed this book. Like I, I, I started it after the GI Joe Transformers one just last week. I was like. Yeah, this sounds interesting. I've heard it's pretty good. And by the end of it, I was like, I wanted to kick down the door to every church and be like, this is the gospel! <laughs> like, it is so good. Like, it is far better than it has any right to be. James Tynan, he's so good. Do you good. think it had so anything good. to do with the Injustice uh, video game uh, video game deal? Because they got the turtles for the Injustice for the DC Probably. Game. I bet. I, I, I would put money on it. Turtle. Yeah. Like, there's probably some weird crossover there. And yeah, the turtles I would have there a is. whole, we could do an entire episode just oh, on Oh, man. I mean, we're going to have to. Fun mini turtles crossover fact uh, is the ooze uh, that turned them from normal yep. turtles into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is the same sludge that blinded Daredevil yeah, so when Matt he was Murdoch. but a wee baby Murdoch. <laughs> and that, of Whoa. course, is that they started off as roughly a Daredevil parody. It was mm -hmm. a few years after the, the Miller stuff, and they mm -hmm. were in the black and white indie boom. And so, like, I still remember when somebody finally pointed out to me that the, one of them is Splinter and one of them is yeah. Stick. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and, that and that one fights the foot and the other one fights the hand. The hand. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Did yeah. not pick up on that as a yep. child. Me neither. Mm -hmm. Yep. I picked up on it as a, on as a child, but I didn't know that they were related. When I was a kid, I was like, oh, well, yeah, like Daredevil fights the hand it, just like the turtles fight the foot. That's cool. That must just be what ninjas are like. Yeah. yeah. Ninja clans are just named after body parts. Yeah. yeah. Probably. Coming and another, the shoulder. Yeah. 
The clavicle. Oh, not the dreaded clavicle. What was what, what, what was the ninjas in the tick used to say? I'm trying to say, like, oh, and then I got, I, oh, I got a bone bruise. I hate those. <laughs> oh, man, I don't remember Remember the really all. whiny, the, the uh, million ninjas? They were all really whiny. I love Then he hit us with a God. chimney. God bless the tick. <laughs> God bless the tick. Thank you, Ben Edlund. Thank you, Ben Edlund, for the whiny. Uh, we know you're watching, uh, Ben Edlund. Yeah, the Ninja Turtle Batman thing, like, Oh my God, so fun. There have now been two mini series of the the sort of more comic book version Batman Turtles and their one mini series of the animated, they call it the Adventures is the sort of subtitle, like yeah. Batman TMNT Adventures. And, yeah, anything mm -hmm. anything Saturday morning-ish tends to get the Adventures yeah. logo attached to it. And I believe they also, I think IDW just announced one this week God, uh, or last stuff. week, it's Star Trek and Transformers. <gasps> I had forgotten about the Star Trek X-Men crossover. Oh, yeah. How? Oh, my God. How did I forget about Gladiator punching the Enterprise? <laughs> oh, my God. Next Gen I X-Men, have when I found out that was one. a thing in the 90s, oh. I tracked that thing down. So, yeah, they're like, like it's like, it's, it was like the Next Gen Enterprise and Gladiator of the Shi'ar Empire is just sitting in space with his blue mohawk. And they're like, what's he, is he going to, is he trying to punch us? And it's just Gladiator going, <laughs> and then it's like, <laughs> shields at 30%. Yeah. Like, oh my yeah! God. <laughs> and there has been more than one. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Several of original them. Original series. Oh. There was also a next gen one. Oh, that like, killed this, me. Yeah. Oh, that was my a big gladiator. God, I love I've gladiator. Got a Find yeah. that. Oh, that's Team fantastic. Gladiator from the from that from that weird X Men run. Um, oh, all right, so oh, we have about five Christmas minutes time. before we need to do our topic, so we need to start winding down. Okay. Mm. Uh, as um, our guest, what else would you like to talk about? Is there anything else? Have we No, I think we, we covered it? a lot of ground. There might have been one or two that we didn't get to that you put on the list, but like I think we talked about the most important ones to me, which <laughs> yeah. was um, wait, going back to JLA Avengers, am I misremembering? Was that where they introduced a seventh infinity gem? Was that a different where did the what? ego gem come in? Where I'm like, so whoa. the end of that, if I can spoil the ending, I don't think anyone's gonna you care. Can. People have had like twenty years. Um Oh, wait, am I, or am I thinking of the Amalgam Universe one? I might be thinking Access. Hold on, let me look. Check. I don't have time. Seventh Infinity Gem? Um, how does that one end? Well, also, as, as just because especially this episode has been really uh, ar archaic and, and difficult to, to hunt down, we do eventually publish uh, every week a list of books of all the books we talk about. Thank you, Kelly Knox. Kelly Knox, for, yes, Kelly Knox is killing she, it. She puts, she puts everything together so you can actually go to the website uh, to Geek and Sunday. Some of the back. stuff is in print. You, I think you can find JLA Avengers in mm -hmm. a current edition. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that one's actually available out there. Others, and, you're going to have to hunt eBay and back issue markets. Yeah, um, and you can find the stuff on, like, you can find, like, used copies on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they're, or your they're, local comic store. Or your fact, comic store, I, yeah. yeah. I, I'm always a big fan of, like, the treasure hunt can be a lot of fun. Or do yeah. like I did in the 90s and read whichever issues of DC versus Marvel you can happen to find. And I just, don't think I read one for years. Yeah. Just figure out the rest. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not a complicated It's not a story. dense story. Now, not I, dense. There's I, a lot of lore. I do know at the end of the Amalgam event with the All Access one, uh -huh. uh, the All Access one is where Doctor Strange... Uh, is still harboring the consciousness of Doctor Strange fate, who didn't want to die, so they bring the Amalgam Universe back, and they start re... It starts exploding again, and Access finds a way to... No, Doctor Strange actually saves all of reality. With a, was that like the one he where does. he teams up with Batman to, to save all of reality? Yeah, okay. yeah he Doctor teams Strange up with Batman. Batman but uh, it's the astral, astral form uh, from three going to uh, four, and he takes the Amalgam Universe and condenses it all into a gem. And then he puts it into access and says, that universe exists in you now and it will exist forever. And that's where it ends. Mm -hmm. So, like, that universe still exists. Narrative Maybe somewhere, but I don't know. Maybe time to dust it off. <laughs> the crossover was inside us all along. <laughs> the real that, crossover yeah. was the For the back issues that, that we purchased along, along the way. way. Yeah. Oh. oh, okay. So, I, I uh, yeah, that's, I kind of, that's. The seventh gem is the goth gem, apparently. That's. <laughs> It, 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 the pyramid it's no, gem? No light, yeah. When I it's say I want a goth gem, this is what I mean. Yes! I was hoping for, like, gem in the hologram, goth gem in the hologram. Oh, man. I want that, too, now. I want, I want a goth person. gem where I can go work out. Oh, but, God, like, I want listen, a gem in Josie the Pussycats cross. Listen to now. Susie and the Banshees. Man, okay, this is just going to be, my head's just going to go. <laughs> well, while, I, while I bench press. You, you bench press, what, 700, 800 pounds? Uh, 700 back issues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, uh, I, like, uh, put two long boxes on there and just go to town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I have to be careful. I have to go very slow, form is precise, because you don't want to uh, damage the on the resale value. No. I need them near mint. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a seven point or above for you. Yeah, otherwise, get out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> if your CGC is lower than 6.5, get out. <laughs> I mean, a six is not that good. I mean, so that's a reasonable standard, I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> Look, I've read thank a lot you, of twos Thank you. I mean, like, you, you've, you've just thrown a I've never seen you throw a gauntlet before. I'm so excited. <laughs> we, finally, we finally found the hill you're going to die on. I mean. Because a six is not that good. It's, it's okay. <laughs> I buy a lot of trash books. They're cheaper. Uh, and you can still read the stories. And sometimes but I'm not they have a lot of character. But I'm not going to pretend that they're not trash. I don't mind a little bit of character. I don't mind a coffee stain on my cover. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of coffee stains, we've come to the time for us to do... The uh, uh, our five minute topic. Never mm. have we hung on a segue more than in that moment. Yes. Yeah. No, I know. I, it, oh was, God. Uh, <laughs> it was it was a terrible segue on I purpose. Love it. It's perfect. Uh, it's time for our uh, Wednesday Club five minute topic, Man, where uh, we you. we take suggestions from you, our lovely audience, and uh, answer the question. All right. And do we do we have it ready? Should I should do. I announce the should I do the actual announcement and then get into it? Um, it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Today's today's question comes from uh, our official uh, official Wednesday Club supervillain, uh, Jody Hauser. Jody Hauser, hello, <laughs> Jody. Oh. We miss you. We haven't seen you in a long time. You keep going to cons. Uh, what two villains from different universes would you pick to be roommates in a wacky sitcom? <laughs> oh my God! This is so great. Octopus and Lex, isn't this it? Is, this is this okay. is so a question for you. Oh my God! All right. So uh, welcome. To the, this is our Wednesday Club five minute topic. Uh, uh, and uh, we've just been asked our question. It's going. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess we're going. Um, do you guys have answers? Oh, no, God. you've got to go. I'm uh, read the question here. again. What, uh, what two villains from different universes would you pick to be roommates in a wacky sitcom? From different universes? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pair, 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 uh, pair two, two roommates. In a wacky sitcom. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. I've got one. I just need a. I need a wacky roommate from from the DCU. I'm, I'm almost. I got a good Marvel one. I need a good DCU. I mean, okay, this is going to be super on the nose, but <laughs> I cannot tell you that I would not watch all 12 seasons of Catwoman, Black Cat. Ooh, that's yeah. good. Yeah, that's good. Like if Cats in the City or they, whatever they, you call it. Oh my God, Cats in the. Oh. They do that joke in uh, the the All Access, where like Batman ends up in 616 New York, and he's like, "Is that Catwoman?" not and it's black cat <laughs> she just kind of gives him a wry smile like no it's not and then she disappears i just like selena kyle and felicia hardy i would watch their adventures for nine to twelve seasons uh it would be it, you know one or the other of them would be like trying to go legit at any given time and the other one would drag them back into the life of crime yeah uh but they would also because they're both kind of heart of gold villains you get great like season ending i know it's a sitcom and i shouldn't be designing soap opera plots for it but you can have both it's the future uh so yeah that's i that's my my show my, my best i have right now is i was just trying to think of the two people from two universes two villains from two universes who would torture each other the most <gasps> yeah and i kind of came up with like like the perfect Punishment is the trickster from from the Flash villain uh -huh. with a doom bot. Oh! <laughs> it's, it's it's just him like trying to pull pranks on a robot that just does nothing other than just yell curse you Richard and doesn't no get what. humor at all. Doesn't get humor. Seriously? Takes everything very seriously. Can't do laundry. Has like like is very like not useful um, on any level. I love it. It's just it's just the worst of both worlds. Do you have anything? I do. Ah, Go for it. Coming please. this Thursday to NBC, it's Mr. Migsy Pitlick and Dr. Doom in the fifth dimension. Oh. One's a cruel <laughs> monarchical despot, and the other is a tiny orange shit boy. Together, they're roommates. This Friday oh, or Thursday God. on Fifth Dimension. Why do oh. I have to follow that? That's not right. I just love the idea, like, especially if Doom is like in his like. Because he's tapped into the magical side before. Yeah, like, he's, he's techno magic. He's yeah. He's summon that guy. That's how he gets stuck Exa with that roommate. Like, he's trying to summon some like eldritch being to make uh -huh. a spell pact with them and then just winds up with freaking Mixy Pitlick in his Oh, and like, castle. it's like Gilligan's uh, every episode is like he almost gets him to say his name and go yes. away. Like, no, not this time. Yeah. Oh, man. And they always, like, he, like, does he foil every single Doom plan or does he, like, I'm is he both. the one, like, he tries to help and like it almost works, but then ultimately undermines him or annoys Doom so much like that Pinky like brain. Do, yes, Doom exactly. It is a very oh my god, it is it's Pinky, Pinky in the, the brain, brain, but with oh my uh, god. more murder, <laughs> lots more murder and chaos, but equally incompetent Pinky. Exactly, yeah. and a great derby hat. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I I I I know that I want to use Harley Quinn because mm -hmm. I think that she would 
be a fantastic foil. She's a bad roommate. I feel she's like a that's okay. she's got to be the worst roommate, Terrible right? With laundry, leaves dishes, it's obvious. Yeah, and like she, I think she has like her own apartment building now or something, and she has a lot of people uh, living over there. Yeah. But like she's a Coney Island landlord, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. Mm -hmm. But she's a mess. But like the only name that can, keeps coming to mind is Enchantress, and I don't know why. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Cause like, I, I don't. But I don't know what that relationship actually ends up but looking like. And Chandra likes to be to be worshipped. And yeah. Like, and and Harley's not going to do that at all. Yeah, she would be very frustrated because she'd be like, my power should work on you, but what, they, worship why me are and you clean immune? my dishes? Harley's like, I've been manipulated by way yeah. level people. I, I have I have a weird need to see Harley Quinn and Peter Parker trying to like be roommates and actually make that shit but, work. But Peter Parker's a good guy. He's yeah, supposed I to be villain. I know to be a villain, which is because is our she villain. Would Torturing so Peter. Much money from him. <laughs> I know. He doesn't even have the money. No. And she would borrow it anyway. I know, and he would just do it because he's. I know. It's just. So who would be a good uh, Spider-Man villain to room with Harley? Oh man. Uh, you kind of sold me on Enchantress. Yeah. I mean, right? Like it's because she worship me. She's like petty a, and dignified, and Harley can sort of play on both of those. Yeah. Like because Harley takes herself way less seriously, but therefore can get away with more and make Enchantress look ridiculous. Yeah, and there seems to be like kind of like a it's fun confidence to her. Yeah. It's got Passive aggressive notes would oh. be a, a, like a very one-sided but amazing thing in that house. Well, passive aggressive exploding exploding packages. Uh, I'm yes. excited for the fifth doom mention. So oh, thank you for three, that. Two, we just uh, got picked one. up for another season. Thank, thank you for watching. This has been the Wednesday Club uh, five minute <laughs> one shot. Uh, uh, you can watch us every single week on uh, Geek on Sundry's Twitch on 7 o'clock on Wednesdays or on Alpha anytime you want to, projectalpha.com. I'm Matt Key. We're joined by Dan Casey. I'm Amy Allen. I'm Talison Jack. And thank you to Jody Hauser, amazing comic book writer, for that question. Thank you. Thank you. For torturing us. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll see you next time. See you next fun. Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> all right, we got we got three minutes left, according to producer Liz. Excellent. Uh, so, oh do we have any great questions? Uh, that's like we've got time for a one or two. Um, mostly, these people are like like. I mean, like it's funny because uh, like the Alpha oh, Chat. Oh man, Vandal Savage and Apocalypse. Yeah. Uh, in chat oh, has. There's been a lot that of good ones. Cool. Harley and Clint Barton sharing an apartment. Wait, as soon That's as you said rough. total mess, I thought the same thing. I was like, he needs a room in Coney Island, probably. Yeah, That's I bet mess. he totally does. She, yeah, I, I can I can imagine that she just has an apartment, and then once it just becomes unlivable, she just moves downstairs to whatever's directly below it and just lives there until it's a but mess. But they'd be and then so much downstairs. fun because he'd be the together friend for her. No. And Kate Bishop Ooh. would be like, I what gotta about, stop. Yeah. What about DC Scarecrow and Marvel Scarecrow? Oh, and they team up in the amalgam verse and try to kidnap Lois Lane, but then Ben Riley cosplaying as Peter Parker or saves the day. Scarecrow. Well, no, I was, I was headed. It's Scarecrow in Scarecrow in Scarecrow. Yay! Uh, Scarecrow and Mrs. King is all I can say. <laughs> so, Dan Casey, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you us. for having me. Where can me. people find you and the things that you do? Uh, you can find me each and every day on Nerdist.com, on Project Alpha. I host uh, a couple weekly shows. The Dan Cave, you want deep dives into weird things about comics, TV, video games, movies, and more. It's a weekly show every Wednesday. This week was about a bunch of video game movies that almost happened but didn't. Things like Castlevania, things like God of War, things like The Last of Us, mm -hmm. some of which is still in development. There's a trilogy of Tetris movies in development. They paid $80 million to get the rights to make three Tetris movies because the story is just too big. They, they, I know that they've been having trouble getting the finances to line up. Yeah, it's just... Uh, uh, just gotta take it brick by brick. Uh, wow. I also host a tech news show called Musk Watch, uh, and also you can just find me online on Twitter at Dan Casey. Yay! Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, I love and show. speaking of thanks, thanks to Comixology Originals for yes. sponsoring our, our show today. And for the entire month of June, uh, we look forward to doing that more with you. Uh, but uh, thank you for that, and make sure to check out all their originals that, uh, that are up there right now. If you're a Comixology uh, uh, Unlimited, uh, Amazon uh, Prime, or Kindle Unlimited, you can read it for free, so go do that. Hey, free comics, yeah. come on. Free comics. Uh, and uh, Dad, this is your Father's Day gift, it's coming to you. <gasps> Uh, I made that at Color Me Mine. Myself. Near Mint. Near Mint. Uh, Brittany and I made that. That's coming to you. My dad, wa my mom and dad watched it. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Hello, uh, parents. Uh, uh, and next week is July 4th for us, and I don't think that we... No, I think that if we showed up here, the doors are going to be... They're, they're going to tell us to go mm -hmm. home. Yeah, so we uh, actually can't do a the show. The show's going to be sucked into the dark dimension. Ah, uh. the mindless ones are going to take it. <laughs>
We have a very special guest the week after that. Yes, we do. Um, who I believe confirmed, so I can go ahead and go. see go. it. Go. I know you want to say um, it. You know, life sometimes gets in the way, but assuming that doesn't happen, a certain Patrick Rothfuss? <laughs> Ooh. What? He comes comics with us? What? He's us as we freak the no. heck out. Uh, in two weeks on this show. Uh, and coming up after this show is... Whee! Oh, weave! <laughs> Stay tuned for that at 9.30, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Goodbye, Internet. We love Bye, you. Bye, everybody. <laughs>